Plainfield, New Jersey, a middle-class city with a strong sense of community. And smack in the middle of town is a soul food restaurant named Blackberries, run by a once successful caterer named Shelly Withers. Hello. The gang's all here, huh? My catering business was fantastic. I had such a tremendous following. It just seemed natural that I would move on to open a restaurant. Hi, how are you? Welcome. And with her mother, Mary, investing her entire retirement fund into the restaurant, Shelly's dream came true. Daddy put the check in the bank this afternoon. Oh, OK. I think it's a parent's responsibility to be supportive of their children. I am so happy with the way the restaurant turned out. The decor is phenomenal. I'm not sure if I understand the records. And Blackberries has the best soul food in town, no doubt. Fried collard greens is my favorite. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. The shrimp was firm. That's because I forgot I'm on the stove. <laughs> perfect location, perfect food. But where are my customers? The problem is Shelly is in denial. She thinks that the decor is amazing and the food tastes spectacular. I like it. But the food is suffering, the customers are suffering, and the restaurant is suffering. The macaroni actually is <laughs> <laughs> like Shelly believes that all of her food is better than any chef out there. Too done? Too done is perfect. She feels this is the way I want it. It tastes good. It doesn't matter what someone else thinks about it. It being my restaurant, I'm going to have it my way. I don't want the food to touch. I say it every day, and okay. you're doing it to me anyway, right? It don't make sense to me. Shelly is a super control freak to the 110th power. I need you to knock these motherfuckers down. Just get it out. What, what, what system are we awesome. following here? It's no system. We have 16 people working back here and 16 people doing their own system. Table five right there in the front. Where is it, please? Guys, it's hot back here. Why is everybody back here? Because we ain't got no food out here. She thinks she knows what she's doing when she actually has no idea what she's doing. Tell me what I can do to help. I don't, I don't understand what's going on. And that brings a lot of chaos here. Let me see that plane. She's helping the restaurant to fail even more. Not that many customers, though, huh? Things are bad. I'm $200,000 in debt. I'm barely holding on here. I got $14 to my name. Bro. Like I tell Shelly, it's just not only her if this restaurant fails, because I have sacrificed a lot to make sure that the doors didn't close. I believe in the power of prayer. I think Chef Ramsey is the answer to her prayers. What an amazing, buzzy little town. Great location for restaurants. Hello. Hello. Good How afternoon. Are you? Welcome to Blackberry. Thank you. Very happy to be here. I'm happy um, to have you here. Wow. Look at this place. Somebody having a party? No, no party. We're no. just having um, lunch. OK, great. Let me seat you. OK. I'll sit over here. And this big boy there, who's this that? This is James. I'm James. James. What's your job? General manager. Stop it. With a baby face like that, you can't be management. Get out of here. <laughs> You look about 18. How old are you? I'm 30 years old. Wow. Amazing. Aging well. And this is? Mom Mary. Mother Mary. Yes, sir. You look great. Nice. Thank what you. do you do? The cakes, the pies, the desserts, really. She's our baker. OK, great. Lord Ramsey is here. I don't want to be sweating all over him. <laughs> Can I kiss him? Can I give him a kiss and thank him for coming or what? Yeah, are about to be all right Hey, how are you, buddy? How are you? How are you doing? Good to see you. You're running around. Pleasure. You're busy, yeah. aren't you? I have to be. Huh? Amazing. Somebody's got to get it done. How long have you been here? Oh, three years. Who and designed okay. this place? I feel like Donna Summer's going to come through the door. That would be Michelle. I think that would be me. Oh. I absolutely love the decor. And a dance party, that's me. Wow. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. OK. Well, hello, uh, darling. <laughs> Look at those beautiful blue eyes. <laughs> I asked my fiance if I could kiss you. Fiance? He's our manager. The woman? Yeah. Oh, come on. Sexy, right? <laughs> You'll get arrested for cradle snatching. Mm, hey, general manager, say. come here. <laughs> get 
at that beard over here. You didn't tell me that you're dating the owner. <laughs> we are, Excuse me. We are engaged. <laughs> Amazing. And was it love at first bite? Yeah. Wow. Way to a man's okay. heart is a stomach. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. He's a little younger than I am, but he's my sexy chocolate. <laughs> Let me sit down, have a quick look through the menu, start ordering. Thank you. Thank you for coming, Gordon. I'm going to see as much as I can. OK, uh, right, let's go for uh, collard greens. Yes. That smothered pork chop sounds delicious. Let's go for some mac and cheese as well, please. OK. okay. The chitlins. And desserts. How's the bread velvet cake? Delicious. OK, great. Very well, thank you. I'm starving. Okay. We're going to put your order in. Excellent. All right, guys, we have our order for Chef. All right, let's do it. I really think that Chef Ramsay is going to say that the food is phenomenal. With the pork chop, put some mac. This is not hot. Just microwave it. This is the craziest decor I've ever seen. Wow, another record. Yeah, they're all over. So her first name is? Eloise. Eloise, yeah. Eloise uh, what's the word? Oh, oh, Jesus. What happened? Was it the fried chicken or the cornbread? What, what went up? Chitlins? Oh, my what happened? goodness. I have no idea. I've never seen that before. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, my God. Did somebody headbutt the wall? It was shocking to find that it was a hole in the wall with a record on it. I was just like, oh, my God. Like, what the hell is that doing there? I've heard about broken records, but Jesus Christ. OK, let's get out of here quick. <laughs> I, I'm afraid to touch any other records. Alright, here you go. Oh, now you know that is a pretty plate, right? <laughs> Shelly is delusional about how fabulous her food is. I hate the macaroni and cheese. Just looks like crap on a plate. This is pork chop, this mother pork chop. Thank you. Just like someone shot on my plate. It's just dry. Bland. Nothing seasoned there. How's your pork chop? Yeah, the pork chop is dry. The mac and cheese is way overcooked and very mushy. You'd think a soul food restaurant would pride itself on cooking mac and cheese, but no, it's just all. Is that heated in the microwave? Huh? No, I think they just put it in the, in the oven to warm for our lunch service. Thank you. What's wrong? He's saying that the macaroni and cheese is dry and overcooked. Ooh. He asked me, have we warmed it in the microwave? I told him, no, it just came out of the oven. They may have put it in the microwave for a minute. Only for a minute, though. Everything is cooked to perfection. There is nothing on that menu that is not perfect. OK, here we go. I'm taking over now. Fried collard greens. Move it to the middle. Put an orange chip in the middle. That's it. How can you actually say this is a social restaurant? Or the collard greens are not tasting like collard greens, since it's just like pepper soil. You know, you can't have food tasting like that. Tell Chef I said to taste those collard greens. They're perfect. Here you go, Chef. Collard greens. Wow. Yes. OK, great. Thank you very much indeed. Wow. It's bland. No seasoning. It's just fried and soggy and limp. Uh, James, what do you think? you got to eat it all together. If you eat it all together, mm -hmm. it should. Well, I did eat it all together, but it still stayed bland. Thank you. Oh my God. What is he saying about our stuff now? A little bland. Oh my God. Collard greens. It's great. He's crazy. Where's the chitlins at? It's in the microwave. They're delicious. If we get one out of three, we might be all right. And this is the chitlins and okra. OK. Chitlets. I mean, I know chitlets are the intestine, but should they really stink? Before I do taste them, I'd like to have pray to God before I put any of that in my mouth. <laughs> In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, you are blessed. <laughs> we rebuke the spirit of the devil. Yeah. You are prayed over. We guarantee you that you are not about to succumb to those chitlins. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name. <laughs> You'll be fine. <laughs> I just had to pray over Chef before he ate the chitlins. What the fuck? 
There's no prayers going to save me on this one. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, chitlets, chitlets. I need the toilet, excuse me. I knew they'd come out quicker than they went in. Chef Ramsay is a mess. Oh, those chitlets are gross. <laughs> Look at that, they have to throw one up. Throw one up? Holy crap. <laughs> are you kidding me? Oh, my God. Oh, they stink. Oh. <laughs> Shall it be taking it? Lightly and not seriously at all. Is he in the children's bathroom? I'm not sure, but I guess the prayer didn't work. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. He's not used to that soul food, huh? <laughs> Thank you. I want to see what's going on. Oh, Jesus. <sighs> so we've got the. Red velvet. Red velvet. Mom Mary makes all of our desserts. Mom Mary. Yes. Wow. Thank you, babe. You're welcome. Mm. Wow. That is delicious. Finally. Some good fucking food. Wow. How do you like this? Yeah, it's delicious. Well done. Wow. Had to wait to the end. I've been saved by Mother Mary. Of course, the red velvet that Mommy makes is going to be beautiful, right? Because Mommy made it. I'm going to punch him in the face. You watch this thing. <laughs> Just show me into the kitchen, please. Yes, Thank you. I sure will. Yep. The chef is on his way back. I'm scared. I would, I would, I'm scared to bring him here. Shelly doesn't listen. When Ramsey gets back there in the kitchen, we'll see if she even opens up to any suggestions or not. Hi, how are you? How are you? Nice to meet you. Mateen. Mateen, good yes, to see you, Good to see you, too. Likewise. Portia. How are Hello, you? Chef. Pleasure. And this is Tyrone. Oh, that's Tyrone. Tyrone. Nice to meet you. Likewise, good to see you, buddy. Uh, so, I just had an embarrassing lunch. Let's start from the top. Pork chop, dry, bland, no seasoning. And the macaroni cheese was an embarrassment. The fried collard greens, there's no seasoning. Everything's just fried, so it just tasted of oil. And horrible. The chitlins, but the smell of them almost made me want to gag. Do not believe that there's that much wrong with my food. Who is the head chef here? I am. Show me tonight. OK. Well, you think you are the head chef. All right. As Shelly and the staff prepare for dinner service. Woo! The food is good up, you know, to my standards. <laughs> chef Ramsay returns and is greeted by an unexpected guest. Oh, what is that? Bloody hell. Damn. Oh, my god. Wow. It's just 10 minutes before the doors to Blackberries open, and Chef Ramsay is greeted by something unexpected. Bloody hell. That. Have you got a pin? Yes, Chef. The moves. Just by the front door. Huh? I, it's by the door. No. We just had the exterminator. You, you paid for the exterminator? Sure. Get your money back. OK, that's not funny. I've got an incinerator outside. Can you take that? No? As a general manager, do something with it. The mouse. The mouse? It was in the entrance as I walked in on a the left-hand side. Mouse? Mouse? We always have the exterminator once a month for prevention. Are you serious? No fucking work. Uh, mouse? Come on. Come At the front door, I'm in the kitchen. Hey, no. guys, be careful of mice. Can you show me where you found that at? It was at the front door. Like where? Oh, but where's the front door in your mind? I can't believe that. I came in the door, walked in there, saw him, bang, right there. Right here. Do you have it on film? Are you kidding me? What, you thought I brought it in out of my pocket? Yeah, I think you did. Are you, are you, are you fucking dreaming? I arrived, the never, mouse was there. Never, never, never here, never. There was no, no, never no mouse right here. Right, OK. Absurd. So we had the exterminator last week. They come on regular occasions. Yes. We right. have an issue with mice. That's why you have an exterminator. We, we don't have an issue with mice. An exterminator comes in 
Okay. Regularly. Just... Let's, let's, you know, I do a little investigation. Let's go. Dwayne, when was the last time you spotted a mouse in here? I, I've never seen one. You've never seen one? No. Good. Except that one that was under the steam table that was dead a few months back. Almost a year back. He found a mouse in the front door. I've never been so embarrassed and humiliated in my life. This is ridiculous. Really ridiculous. And sad. I've never seen a mice in here. Perhaps you planted that uh, mouse. And you are suggesting that I brought it in. I was like, hmm, I put it together, like, just for TV's sake, maybe. I, I wish you would talk a little bit of sense. Fuck the TV. Put Good. your money where your mouth is, in front of your staff. I want a meeting upstairs with you and everybody now. Yes. Mice out of his pockets and stuff. Yeah, chasing responsibilities for something, man. How you gonna help us if everybody keep bullshitting, man? A mouse in the front it matter. It's, it, it's, it's mice infested all over this place. It can happen. It can happen. Shelly? Huh? Can I have a two seconds, please? Okay. Uh, all, all of you. This is very, very important. So. I was telling him, seeing him, like, almost, like, plant that, uh, vermin. Mm -hmm. So, just look at James for me, two seconds. I walked in the front door, a mouse. The mouse that you planted, I know. They told me. But it's OK. No, it's not it's OK. A show. It's got nothing to do with TV, nothing to do with your business in the shit. I am not going to stand there and even attempt to take that crap from you. You can take your restaurant and stick it. I'm gone. I'm out of it. You out of here. I'm out of here. Excuse me. Go. See you later. Shut it down. Let's go. It's over. After discovering a mouse in the restaurant, okay. do you have it on film? And being accused of planting it. The mouse that you planted, I know. Chef Ramsay has had enough. Take your restaurant and stick it. I'm gone. You out of here. I'm out of here. Excuse me. Go. See you later. Shut it down. Let's go. It's over. It is not over. Could you please shut up? I mean, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I have worked tremendously trying to support my child, and I don't understand. You know, it's, I, I don't understand what's happening today. Honest to God, I don't. Please don't leave. Yeah, no, I'm out of here. Please don't Because you're leave. exaggerating. Can I talk to you? Can I talk to you? Just yeah. me and you? Yeah. I, I take back what I said as far as you doing something like that. I don't want to defame your character, but it just was, I'm lost for words that that happened, and it, it just, it, it just like shocked me. And I, I apologize. That's the most sensible thing I've heard you say since I've been here. Thank you. Sure. The combination of Mother Mary's plea and an apology by James are enough to keep Chef Ramsay at Blackberries. Welcome to Blackberries. At least for now. Yes, sir. This evening will be Tina. She'll be right with you. The grandma's original fried chicken. OK. Southern style. And I'm going to get uh, macaroni and cheese. All right, ladies, let me put these orders in. First order, shrimp and grits. Would probably be a shrimp and grit night. Am I seeing right? You've got a, a free burner wok there. Is that a pizza oven? Yes, that's my pizza oven. And the wok. Okay. I love it, Chef. Right, Shelly, how can you cook soul food in a wok? Watch me, Chef. Watch me. Soul food is supposed to be cooked slowly. Soul is cooked with love and soul, not in a wok. Shelly's cooking green beans in a wok, cooking rice in a wok, cabbage in a wok. We're not a Chinese soul food restaurant. We don't need a wok, OK? That's the first of me, a southern food restaurant with a Chinese wok and a pizza oven. And you have an oven that doesn't work right there. Tell me what's working, apart from you. 
We haven't had correct working ovens. We don't have the correct stoves, the correct fryers, grills. You know, how can we produce really great food if we don't have really great ovens? How do you manage to fry everything in one fry like that? Very hard. A lot of prayer. After discovering unusual and dysfunctional equipment in this soul food restaurant, Chef Ramsay turns his attention to Shelly and how she runs her kitchen. Fry chicken, please. How many white meats do you need? Fried chicken, Mateen. Well, I'm going to call the artist. You can't call Honey, the artist. do again. your chicken. I'm do doing this. It. Let's get one thing straight. OK. Can you please work on ticket one? We are. Are we? I mean, I don't understand what you're okay, doing. You're walking um, in a damn circle. Shelly has no concept of what it means to actually run a proper, functional kitchen. Portia, one ticket at a time I need you to do for me. that's I, what I, I'm, I'm doing. OK, just one. Just do one. That's, what, that's how I do, one. Just make it and send it. That's it. Make it and send it. Unbelievable. And where's the control, the chef, the, the system? What, what system are what we I'm following doing. here? It's like there's no system. I mean, this is a joke. If you try to get one, she wants to argue you down. You know, she wants to argue you down and make it seem like you're the one that's wrong, or it can't be run like that. But it's not making it's, sense. Or it's too Look right down there. Look down there. Yeah, Look. It's like, one, you know, two, it's three. Six, seven down there. I want you guys off the line. Just go. Watch out. Just back up. It's getting ridiculous already. It's been an hour and a half. She just kind of want to get up and move. How long are we waiting, Dwayne? Close to an hour. An hour. My first time in here, and it's just dysfunctional. There doesn't seem to be one person controlling it. I have the recipe. I'm the exact. Oh, my Shit. god! Shelly thinks she knows what she's doing when she actually has no idea what she's doing. We need a miracle, a prayer, hands on bending knees, because this is going to the shits. Here we go, fried chicken. Despite the ongoing chaos in the kitchen, dishes somehow make their way to the dining room. And that's the result. You wait 90 minutes, and this is what you're lucky to get. Oh, I don't like it. It's crazy in there. Huh? Huh? That is crazy in there. Always. In yes. there's a war zone. Always. Huh? Always. Always. Welcome to Blackberry. Step Ramsey. That's it, hell. What a welcoming. Coming up, is it her way or the highway? When the staff tries to get through to Shelly... I have been open-minded. She goes from the defensive to the offensive. Calm down. Calm down. I'm not I upset. want you to leave. Tell me to go, I go. And then at dinner service, Blackberry spirals out of control. I don't want to hear it. Leaving Chef Ramsay wondering... Shelly! ...if this restaurant can be saved. Now you walk away. Goodbye. 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 See you later. It's day two at Blackberry's. And Chef Ramsay knows that before he can implement changes, he has to focus on how this restaurant is run. And so he starts the day with a staff meeting. I want to go around now to identify things that you know that are wrong with the business and things that you'd like to change in the business. I think um, one thing is I've known Shelly. We kind of grew up together. And she is a control freak. If she does not see it being implemented the same way that she would do it, she's going to jump in and she's going to take over. But is it overbearing? Is it too controlling? Yes. It's either her way or the highway. And it inhibits anyone to show off their skills or what they can do or what they can bring to the restaurant. But you have someone that's down your throat constantly sure. and really doesn't know what they're doing. If you were so right, obviously the restaurant wouldn't be failing or in a situation that is it. No, but it's a very valid point. You've employed some talented individuals. OK. Portia. Shelly needs to learn how to delegate responsibility. She can't be hands-on all the time. It creates a problem. Oh, my god. Shelly, in all honesty, you take somebody out of what they're supposed to be doing and make them do something else. And that's one thing you got to realize, and that happens more often than I not. I think that you talk too much and you know too much. This is and the that attitude. Is part of that's the problem. what makes this so rough. Dwayne, well, be at quiet. One time or another, Dwayne. everybody has been Dwayne. pushed off their position. Dwayne, calm down. I'm not, and I wasn't upset. Dwayne, I tried to tell you something. I'm, I'm asking right. you to calm down. I'm not, I'm not I upset. I want you to leave. Good night. I don't have Thank a problem you so with much that. Because the truth honestly hurts. The truth hurts. Right, we're going to fix that. We're going to fix that. Dwayne, 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 just bear with me for two minutes. Sit down, please. OK? My goodness. What is wrong with you? I made one comment. What's become evident 
is how fragmented we are. But that starts from the top. Chef. Shelly have to learn how to listen. Everybody tries to communicate with her and support her, but if she's gonna be stubborn and not listen, the doors will close. And that would just break my heart, I mean, tremendously. From now on in, open, honest dialogue. Got it? Yes. Shelly? Shelly, I can't hear you. I'm listening. No? We're all I'm in listening. together. Are we going to be open-minded? I have been open-minded, as far as I'm concerned. Why would you say that? This is not a joke. Your livelihood is on the line. I mean, you're in a serious, serious position. There's no reason why you cannot be open and honest, because my I'm 72 years old. Oh, and I thank sense. God that I've been able to live this long. And these are the most important things that I try to project. Listen to what this gentleman has to say. I want to move forward. I'm here to help. Right. And the direction is to you, Shelley, because there's some valuable information that we've just listened to. We know you're the boss. What you haven't got right now is a successful restaurant. And everyone in this room, including me, are here to make that a success. But you have to get out of denial. Agreed? Agreed. I can't hear you. Agreed. Agreed. Thank you. Only time will tell whether Shelley has really understood what the staff was saying. Come with me. Let's go in the kitchen. Let's get to work. But Chef Ramsay has already implemented a drastic change in the kitchen. Oh, my God! Oh, my God! Oh, my God! I called a friend, Kelly Quip. And he arranged for a brand new fryer and a state-of-the-art six-ring burner, an amazing convection oven from South Bend. Incredible. Oh, um, a six-burner stove, Tyrone. I just can't believe. Unbelievable. I've had it done, especially for your baking as well. Oh, oh my God! Yeah. I'm bursting at the seams. Just, I, I just can't believe it. Oh, man, this is awesome. Is the walk gone? There's no way on earth we can start to move forward cooking on a Chinese wok. A wok that you cannot cook soul food on. We can okay. have a proper system here. Where's the wok? <laughs> I am definitely going to miss my wok. But it's just going to be an adjustment for me. Oh, my god. Incredible. I just can't believe this. Happy Mary? Father God, I just can't thank you enough. <laughs> I'm glad you're happy. Oh, this is just so wonderful. This is truly, truly a blessing. Chef Ramsay is, he's unbelievable. I truly believe in the power of prayer. I prayed so hard that you would come and that you were going to turn this restaurant around. I'm just so overwhelmed. I thank you so much. Now that the kitchen has functional equipment... OK, there's one thing that's missing here. That's the structure. What, what system are we following here? We're going to work as a team. Chef Ramsay appoints a leader. Tomorrow night, my team. Yes. I want you cooking yes. and expediting. Yes. Chef Ramsay helped implement a system to help this restaurant run very smoothly from now until forever. I'm going to make something very, very simple with you all now, just a stunning mac and cheese. He also works with the chefs on some new cooking techniques. Golden brown, take a spoon and have a little taste. Chef Ramsay has suggestions. I'm going to do my best to be as open as I can. <laughs> but I just, I don't know. We are going to reopen this restaurant tomorrow night with a system. One voice, one leader. Yes. And work as a team, a system. Don't change it. Coming up. Shelly. I'm coming. It's the relaunch of Blackberries. I don't want to hear it. Shelly! Will Shelly be able to handle the changes? Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. And later, a surprise ending. We have worked our ass off. You have to see to believe. Close the damn place down. After the implementation of a new system in the kitchen, Chef Ramsay and his team worked through the night to give the dining room a much needed makeover. Okay, good morning. Excited to see inside? Yes. Yeah. Yes? 
Let's go. Welcome to the new Black Brits. When I first arrived here, there was the cafeteria, the menu on the wall, and it just lost that intimacy. Now it's a restaurant. Gone is the cafeteria. You have a wonderful, amazing new restaurant. Brand new tables, brand new chairs. It's a totally but... different place. Look at my elbow. Yes. <laughs> I promise you, they're not your records. I love my new restaurant. The artwork, the tables. It's like a dream come true. I absolutely love it. The soul is back. I'm just so excited and so grateful. I'm just overwhelmed. Shelly, how do you feel? I feel great. Oh, 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 that's rare. Oh, uh, thank God my middle name's James, right? <laughs> now that Blackberries has an updated look. Now for the exciting part, the food. Oh, wow. Chef Ramsay has created a fresh, new soul food menu to match it. What we've done is taken some of the dishes and modernized them a little bit, give them a bit of a, a new twist. Starting off with the black-eyed pea fritters, delicious. Barbecue pulled pork sliders, wonderful starter. Entrees, fried chicken and waffles with the honey butter. Oh, snap! I Next love one, that. A southern meatloaf sandwich done with mac and cheese and a spicy glaze, like a really nice, rich, spicy ketchup. Oh, man. I love it. I love it. Shelly looked like she was embracing the change very well. I'm glad that Chef Ramsay finally broke through to her. Is that beautiful? Dig in and have a taste. Oh, my god. Here we go. Fried chicken and waffles and blackberries. This menu is great. Mm -mm -mm. Wow. I think I have a winning combination here. Chef did it. Food, atmosphere, we're ready. Ooh, that's heavy. It's relaunch night at Blackberries. OK, we're about to open. We put a structure in place. And Chef Ramsay has given them all the tools they need to make this restaurant a success. Blackberries! Let's go. <laughs> Good afternoon. Welcome to Blackberries. This is a nice looking menu. With the restaurant filling up. We're going to do the pork sliders. And orders coming in from the dining room. Okay, Order good. in. It's now up to the newly appointed leader, Chef Mateen, to take charge of the kitchen. One jerk wings, one shorty, one chicken with white meat. Fried chicken, white meat, six minutes. Echo. Thank you. Good. Off we go. Here we go. Oh, thank you. Let's go. With Chef Ramsay's new system in place and the team working together. Shelly, six minutes on my oxtails. Echo on the oxtail. Thank you. Dinner service is off to a smooth start. Okay, here we go. We're rocking. And out in the dining room. Fried green tomatoes. Those are excellent. The customers are thrilled with what they are receiving. Yeah, I need an oxtail shorty. Okay. Hey, Dad, you okay? The restaurant is packed. Wait till you see it. You're not going to believe it. I need an oxtail and a shorty right now. I'm on the line a little bit tonight. Shelly. Shelly. He was asking for stuff, and you're just ignoring him. I'm coming. Okay. All right. Love you, Dad. You okay? Let's go, please. All right. Shelly being on the phone is totally disrespectful and a slap in the face to her kitchen team. What she's saying is, I don't give a damn. It's my world, and this is the way I'm going to do it. The rest of you, who cares? How long for my oxtail? What? What? Things were going really well at the beginning because they were being executed, but then I just don't think Shelly wanted to be there. I need an oxtail and a shorty first. <laughs> what? She's not in control, and if she's not in control, she doesn't want to follow me. Shelly? Yes, Shelly. It's like we just switched off and forgotten. Yeah. Why have we forgotten our systems? The most important thing about a system is keeping it, yes? Go back to your stations. I am the owner of this business, and I'm just not taking any shit from anyone. Hell no. What is this? What? Who put my corn in it? I did. It's dry. I don't want it to dry out, honey. Don't do that. Shelly. Yes, Shelly, don't do that. You're doing, you're going back again. I don't want it to dry out. Come here. No, Look, come here. Come here. Look at me. I only ask you, don't do it. Okay. Mateen, yes. we're going back again. We're going back to our old bullshit ways. Don't touch what he's doing. OK. You said it's dry. Was it dry, the corn? No, it wasn't No, dry. it wasn't, it wasn't fucking done yet. dry. It wasn't even done yet. Thank you. I don't care what you he don't... says. Chef Ramsay's system works. It's this Shelly that doesn't want it to work. So when it's sitting on the side, drying out, just leave it there? What are you talking about? I don't know. I don't want to hear it. 
Shelly! I'm not talking back. Shelly, now you walk away. Bye! Goodbye! Goodbye! She's gone. Bye. See you later. It's relaunch night at Blackberries. Don't touch what he's doing. And as Chef Ramsay tries to keep everything on track, it's not I don't want to hear it. Don't sir. Shelly goes off the rails. Goodbye, goodbye. She's gone. And storms out of the kitchen. Goodbye. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. What happened? They were doing so good. Yeah. Shelly started coming in and picking up bits and disrupting them. I asked her to stop it and let my team do it, and she got really funny. Ever since then, she just switched off, so she's, she's closed down. Shelly is a crybaby. She's not willing to admit that she's wrong, and that's pretty sad. With Shelly out of the kitchen... Stop everything you're doing. Play this one for me right now. Chef Mateen and the staff try to pull it together. OK, and we're going to send a ticket out right now. To get the remaining dishes to the hungry diners. I'm hungry. Mateen, Let's go. you've got to push it. Yes, Chef. You control the kitchen. Yes. I need right now, I need two fried green tomatoes. I need that now. Working. OK? Working. Nice. Let's go. Can you get Dwayne to take this out for table one, please? Dwayne, off you go. Table 50, let's go. Finally. Might be a little slow, but it's going to be great. With Mateen leading the kitchen... I need a side of fries up in the window now. Side of fries. Good. The final entrees make their way out to the dining room. Yay, we got our food! And customers are loving the food. It's worth the wait. Wonderful, I think. You guys are good. It ran so smooth. We have the system now. This right here is the first day of greatness of many more days to come. And I loved it a lot. Everything was great. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. With the staff completing a successful relaunch, Chef Ramsay yeah. gathers the group. Uh, OK. But there's someone missing. Where's, uh, Shelly? In the office. Shelly, can I, uh, can I talk to you? Please? Shelly? Shelly? No point in making yourself look any more stupid. Shelly, just two seconds. Not going to argue. She's not coming. We don't need her. Come on. Shelly needs to listen to Chef Ramsay. You just can't close ears to someone that's come to help you. Please. You really don't have anything to say. If, if you, don't you don't need to have anything to say. Just go outside. Out of respect for your staff. I love my staff. Well, then you want them to walk out on you and you'll have the Let's restaurant? Go, man. I'll clean up tonight. My Forget staff. about cleaning up tonight. What about the rest of yeah. the days? Oh, dear. And I'm so ashamed of you that I don't know what mother. to do. Shelly, we have worked our oh, ass off. Oh, God. Can you please well, if, you are, my if you are done, close the damn place down. Let's go, Tyrone. I don't believe Shelly deserves all this great help she got. I mean, someone like me that's been cooking and went to culinary school would kill for something like this opportunity, you know? It saddens me so much. OK. I know it's been a rough night, but on a personal note, I just want to say thank you. Why? Because you guys worked your butt off. Nobody gave up. There's something personal about soul food for me. I started a small little documentary called Kitchen Nightmares seven years ago, and my first ever restaurant was a soul food shack. It's why I started to put him back into the industry, and you guys deserve success. You did a fantastic job. Chef Ramsay, he's up there with the best angels. I'm just so delighted and so grateful, and we are going to do our part to make him proud of us. We definitely will make sure that your efforts were not in vain. Thank you. Thank you. Shelly had the world's greatest chef in here to teach her and to help her business, but she may throw this all, the whole system out the window with the whole menu. Only time can tell. Can we have 30 seconds, please? I think this is my office. Are you asking me for 30 seconds at my office? Yes, I am. Absolutely not. Okay, that just sums it up. Yeah. That's the only thing I haven't changed. <sighs> I really wanted 
a happy ending tonight. Why? Because this week I've met some amazing people. Mother Mary, what a sweetheart, and a phenomenal cook. Mateen, that guy has a bright future, and he is packed with passion. But the fate and the future of Blackberries rests in the hands of Shelley. And unfortunately, restaurants do not succeed when they're run by a dictator. I planted a mouse. Was she crazy? In the weeks that followed, Hi, nice to see you. Customers responded well to the changes Chef Ramsay made to the menu and the decor. Mm, the steak is tender. After witnessing the positive reviews, surprisingly, Shelly embraced all that Chef Ramsay has done for blackberries. Nice, right? Beautiful. I like it. I was so skeptical, but Chef Ramsay has opened up a new world for us here at Blackberries. I'm ready for change. It was difficult for me to see that at the beginning, but here it is. The truth is the light. You guys enjoy. The Ventura Harbor in Southern California, an oceanfront playground that attracts throngs of tourists and locals. It's this ideal location that drew Mikey Michelados and his wife Lynn to open a Greek restaurant just steps from the water. Hello, welcome to the Greek. From day one when we opened the restaurant in 1994, it was a success. Oh my gosh, really good. We did great, it was always busy. Whoop! Uh, Already, guys, let's start in. My dad, he had that old school Greek work mentality, just go, 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 and the kitchen was always running very smoothly. I need a large pan, because I'm gonna cook some onion. I felt my American dream come through. Make me feel like very successful, very, very good. But as time went on, my dad's standards have dropped. Okay, I got it complete. Hey guys, they said the keftetas were rock hard. Huh? He's been working 365 days a year for 17 years. He's just burning out from being here so long. It was rubbery. What do you mean rubbery? I don't know, on the oh, bottom. There's no rubbery. Mikey, I mean, he hardly anymore is making sure that everything is cooked to perfection. Put it up, put it up. Mikey, that's not good. It hurts me when I see our level drop because the standards are not high enough. I'm done. Yeah, yeah. the lamb is pretty dry. It all looks like it came out of a cafeteria. <laughs> Mikey's really let a lot of things slip through the cracks. The calamari was really, really... I taste the calamari, it was good. Well, it's not Mikey, okay? And that's why our business has declined. Not very many people around. The situation is frustrating, but I want to change this place. I want to make it better. I haven't learned everything, but I will. I know I can. I mean, I'm very capable, and I know I can make it better than ever. My dad has a hard time listening to other people sometimes because this is what he created, but I'm here to help. I mean, he wants to make sure I'm 100% ready, but I can't be 100% ready if he doesn't allow me to be. I need your help. Opa. Eris is a super creative person. He's a great entertainer, great people person. Opa. But at the same time, how are you gonna help him run a restaurant if you don't know the kitchen? To run this restaurant, you have to come back here at this kitchen and Ares did not have done this before. This restaurant is not only my father's legacy, it's all of our legacy. We've all worked together, and I've seen the profit pretty much diminish until it's been non-existent. How much money do we have in our account right now? We're getting low, we're getting low. I don't know how I'm gonna do this. It's like we work our asses off and we don't make any money. It's hard. Oh my God. I'm just hoping that Chef Ramsay will help us get this restaurant to be the success it deserves to be. I don't want what we've spent years building up to be lost. I just don't want that to happen. Wow. Look at this place, absolutely stunning. On the water, it's almost like a little slice of the Mediterranean. I'm fairly busy as well. How on earth can a restaurant fail in this spot? Dying to find out what's been going on. It's huge. Great food on the water. Hello. Well, hello. How are you? I'm excellent. And first How name are is? You? Lynn. Lynn Gordon, nice to see you. Um, 
owner. Yes. Brilliant. Uh -huh. And my you run the business? Mikey and I. You run it with your husband? Uh huh. Yeah, go ahead. How are you doing? And there he is. This is Eric, oh. our son. Hello. Nice to meet you. By the way, good to see Thank you. Thank you for coming. I'm not so. Why don't you get your father and sure. let's sit down and have a catch up? I'm really happy to see Chef Ramsey and I hope he's pretty nice to my boys. Not too nice. <laughs> okay. Um, a, I'm very happy to be here. B, I'm dying to find out what's wrong with the place. How could a restaurant not work when it's sat on the water? Right. Okay. Mum. Uh, 17 years. It was very successful, and we did very, very well. So when did it start to turn? The last couple of years. No profit. No profit, yeah. yeah. Wow. Okay. Um, and how often are you here? <laughs> well, I work 14 hours a day, seven days a week, but... Seven days a week? Yeah. <laughs> That's the truth. Serious? That's crazy. It is crazy. He's been doing it too long. He's burnt out, and he might not admit it, but he is. Are you burnt out? No. 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 Are you going to sit in that kitchen till you drop? I mean, uh, where's the succession? Is the goal to groom Aris to take over, or...? No. No. Well, I'm here, and I'm doing all the, a lot of stuff right now. I mean... Sure. Do you work um, in the kitchen? I don't, but that's one of my goals. I want to learn the kitchen. It's one of my... I'm glad you're here, because I want to learn more stuff. And... Do you teach him how to cook? No. Really? Why? Is he not good enough? Are you that much of a control freak? No. 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 Is he not no, committed? I, well, I was thinking. I feel like I'm pulling teeth back, here. Back in my mind, I expect him to be more here than he was. So he's not committed. He's just getting the passion. He never really wanted when he graduated uh, college. I never thought I would do he it. He didn't want to be part of our business. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I'm here just trying to save this place, and it's just. Are you committed now? Are I you? am committed here. I am. You are. Yes, I am. I understand. Like, yeah, I haven't been here at times, but. I need Chef Ramsey to prove to my dad that I'm ready to do whatever it takes to make this place run better and smoothly, and it's time for big changes. This is the time. So how would you rate your food out of 10? What would you give it? My food, I'd give it 10. 10? Yes. <laughs> right. Let me eat. Let me uh, get the grips. Good to see you. Nice to meet you. Likewise. And, um, OK. All the recipes that I have for the Greek food came from Greece. A lot of people, when they visit Greece, they come here and they tell me the food is better here than Greece. I think Chef Francis is going to like my food. Yes. Hi, how are you doing? How are you? How are you? My name is Dimitri. Dimitri, good, good to see you. Where are you nice from? You. I'm from uh, Greece, Sparta. Nice. How long have you been here? And this restaurant, almost 15. Wow, 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 wow. Long so time. you know everything. Everything. First, the calamari. The calamari is going to be heaven, or it's going to be hell. Exactly. Shit. OK. <laughs> Let's try the calamari. OK. And, and do you know what? I'll have the uh, hot the sample. sample. The platter. The platter? OK. Yeah. And I'll take the cold platter as well. I'd like to see that. I want to see as much as possible. OK. Anything else? I'll have the moussaka with the beef. castle with okay. the beef. Yeah. With the beef. Brilliant. I think we're done. Thank you. I'm very excited. San Francisco, the guy is smart. And Mikey, he needs to see when the food is not good, everything is not good. Calamari appetizer, make it. Heat the olive oil and put onions and bell peppers with the wine. You guys do what I say. Mikey's a very proud person. He does not take criticism well. But Jeff Ramsey's here to help. He's not here to compliment. Mmm. Nice tables. Why would you cover them? Dreadful tablecloths. Bloody hell. The decor is hideous. I haven't seen chairs like this since their banquet 30 years ago, my grandma's 80th. Is that a disco ball up there? Saturday night fever. In fact, it's like there's two disco balls up there. What's going on in here? It's almost like going back to 1970. OK. That, that's a calamari. OK. And we're is looking at uh, heaven or hell? Oh, dear. And this is our cold platter. OK, okay great. Okay. Thank you. Enjoy it. Greasy. It looks like I'm having a hell day, right? Yeah, it's not. Yeah, it's not. It's not good. Yeah. It's terrible. Oh, Sorry. dear. Can I take it away? Mm, quickly. I know. <laughs> Damn. How was the calamari? Oh, good. Very greasy. People love it. Yeah, it's very greasy. Very popular. That's a strange looking hummus. Seriously. No, there's only way to do that. Is this straw? <laughs> Mm. Seriously, I mean, honestly. Yeah, no, it's ridiculous. I mean, Greek dips. It looks like six plates of Greek dog shit.
That's what it goes in like. Imagine what it's going to come out like. Mikey, the Greek restaurant, the hummus is the most important. He ate it with a straw. I mean, you have to be really idiot to make the, the hummus watery. This is our hot sampler. Wow. OK. Jesus. Meatballs are cold in the middle. Falafel look like they've been sat on by a fucking Greek goddess. Yeah, no. And the filler paste, there's a lot of filler paste, but hardly anything in them. Yeah. And greasy, very shiny. Yeah, not good. Yeah, and they're okay. terrible. There's no filling in there. Thank you. Thank you. A taste of grease. Yeah, a taste of greasy. What okay. the fuck is that? What is that? This is the moussakas. Moussakas. That's for the roasted uh, potatoes. OK, great. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy it. Mm. Wow. Moussaka. It's drab. I mean, it's shocking. So bad. Dreadful. Dimitri. The eggplant is spongy and raw. You having the moussaka? Yeah, it's disgusting. Carrots and mush. That is an insult to any Greek isle. Listen, can you get me all the chefs in the kitchen out on the dance floor? I'd like to meet them, please. Of course. OK, guys, all of the cooks, he wants them over there. He wants all the cooks. Everybody. Um, you complain. I mean, falafel sucks. No, to me, it was not good. I saw some of my food is not the way he was describing the food. Oh, dear. Dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. That was a disaster. I mean, I've just sat down and had the biggest fucking embarrassment to Greece that I've ever tasted in my entire life. The platter, bland, falafel, dry. And the biggest kick in my Greek kahanas, liquid hummus. Liquid. The Greek moussaka, eggplant, undercooked, bitter. It's an insult, not just to Greece, but to the vegetable itself. Did anyone taste it? Of course, it's wrong. <laughs> it's done wrong. Come on. That's frightening. What hurts me is the fact that you're actually realising that it's shit and still sending it. I can't do anything about it. I'm Greek, I grew up with this food, but I'm not allowed to cook the food the way I cook it in Greece. Here, I'm following Mikey's way, and he's tired. Mikey, have you given up? No. You run your business like you've given up. No, no, it's not true. I don't believe that my food is that terrible, OK? My food is similar to Kefalonia. You think it's similar to Catalonia? Yes, sir. Yeah. Not today, my friend. Your calamari is greasy, it's bland. How come I have all these people say my calamari is the best they ever have? The blown smoke up your ass. You're not that stupid. Well, you're, no one or you're two. You're thousands of people. No, stop exaggerating. Where are the thousands of people that tell you that your calamari is the best? Are they booked in for dinner tonight? came from Greece. You bring it over and you make it better here. You've made it worse. I got really upset when Seth Francis talked to me like that. I know how the food is, and people love it. And he has no clue about the food here. The town of Ventura is abuzz with Chef Ramsay's visit. How y'all doing? And as the restaurant fills up with diners... Are you ready? I think I'm going to go. Chef Ramsay is anxious to begin his kitchen investigation during dinner service. So what do you do in service? How do you work? What do you do? What I do here? Yeah, yeah, here. They work, I watch. I do expedites. I do if I have to. Wow. Uh, where are the POS systems? POS is right here. Marika. Marika. There's my daughter right there. Hello. This is your daughter. Hi. How are you? Nice to meet you. Likewise, good to see you too. I think Chef Ramsay doesn't know what he's stepping into. My dad is just like really set in his ways. And what's that for? Just the men's onions, and this is veggie dolmades. What's under here? Baked carrots. Bloody hell. We cook them today. So it's served like a cafeteria. Well, everything, all the carrots done, and all on bain marie. There's a lot that we cook and then store and just take out whatever is for the order, each order. And that's not good. But I'm not leading the kitchen, so I don't really have a saying over that. So all this is cooked? It's cooking right now, yeah. No, it's not cooking, it's cooked. Yeah. 
We're cooking food and it's, it's sitting there, drying out. It's all cooked to shit. Doesn't look like a cafeteria to you? No. God bless California. One saltabellus, please. Josh. Yes. You have a lot for me. With so much of the food prepared in advance. You happy with that? Yes. This restaurant has no problem sending dishes out at a rapid pace. Table 10, table 15, table 91, please. Ready. Calamari. Chicken Caesar salad. Does food normally come out this quickly, are they? Yeah. It's like sort of flying out. Okay, he's ready. Take it, take it. Oh, my gosh. Mikey, do you want to tell them anything? Do you want to say anything to the chefs? What do you want me to say? All right, let's keep going. Everything all right back here? Get out. It's just ridiculous. Like, I'm not trying to stop you. I'm trying to help you. But my dad, he gets so egotistical about it sometimes. It's like, I'm just this little eight-year-old getting barked at. You right? Yeah, yeah, I just need to cool off after that. I know, and, no, but I can and, see the tension. Your father's there, expediting the food, letting it go, sauce dripping all over the side, and it's almost like he's given up. I mean, was he like that 10 years ago? No, I, I think he's just physically exhausted, and he's been working 15 hours a day his whole life. I mean, imagine that. Do you ever sit down and say, Dad, you know, it's so obvious where we're going wrong. And I want to help, but he doesn't want to listen. He's so stubborn, man. I don't know, man. It's just... <sighs> Horrific. This has turned out to be a very funny Greek restaurant. A little bit different to what I expected. Unfortunately for the diners, the restaurant is also different from what they expected. I don't like it. You don't like it? The lemon's dry. The veggies came out raw, and then I brought out more, and they were still raw. Oh, God. As Trey. This is cold. After Trey. The lamb chops are supposed to be rare. After Trey. That bull is very blood. Gets sent back to the kitchen. Oh, my God. Unbelievably, there's almost as much food coming back as there is going out. Dad, how you doing? Don't bother me. Go dance, go dance, go. The situation is frustrating. Obviously, we have problems with this restaurant, but I don't know what to do exactly. Khalid, you ready, huh? Okay. I'll announce it right now. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Greek at the Harbor. Uh, my name's Eris. Uh, we're going to perform a little dancing for you right now. So please enjoy the show. There's more dances to come. Hello, Opa. Opa. What's that clapping going on? We have Greek dancing and the belly dancing and... Really? Yeah. Un fucking believable <laughs> Now I get what he's passionate about. This might Eris pleasing some of the diners with his dancing. We have a problem. They continue to be far from pleased with the food. What's wrong? The batter on the fish and chips was still slimy. The roast lamb was inedible. Give me Eris, please. Oh, and they said all of it was lukewarm. Where's Mike? What is it? Just to smell that. Just smell inside there. Inside. What's wrong with that? Eat a little bit. I'm not eating that, it's smell. It's good. It's what? It's good. You're sick, Mike. You're sick. Man. I'm very worried about Mikey because it should be obvious when something's not cooked properly. There's no way that you can say, oh, well, they were just complainers. It's real. Yaris, you need to know what's going on here as well. As far as your father's concerned, it's good. There's nothing wrong with it. It's dry as hell. He's not even a chef and he knows it's dry. Come on, Mike. You stood there and watched that shit come out. It's an embarrassment to Catalonia. I knew this was going to happen. My dad, uh, he's not stupid. He's a great cook, but he also is in denial a bit. He's the type of person that like, asking for help maybe is a sense of failure to him. My emotions are, are deeply hurt from what Seth Ramsey says. Hey, Dad. Yeah. Are you just relaxing? Yeah. It's just really sad, you know? He's just an older man that can't really handle it all. I love you. I do too. 
I just don't like it when my dad is so sad. It really hurts. It's an hour and a half into dinner service. They don't like any of it. And even though food is flooding back to the kitchen. You stood there and watched that shit come out. It's an embarrassment to Catalonia. Mikey seems to have lost interest. It's almost like he doesn't, it's just. What do you want me to say? I don't feel good when I see food coming back. Mike, can I have a word with you? Go outside. Yeah. What's happening? I don't know. But why are you doing this to yourself? What do you want me to do? I want you to wake up a little bit. You're letting it happen under your nose. What do you want me to say? I just want you to be a little bit more fucking honest with yourself. I never lie. OK. But how come you haven't taught Aris anything? How come you haven't done by your side? Why haven't you treated him like a son? What is it? Nothing. Something's happened, and you better tell me what. I don't know what happened. I don't know. Yes, you do. I don't have to say nothing. Oh, don't, don't, don't act like that. You can't just give up. Come on. How are we doing? You want me How to leave you alone? No, we're not doing well. We're not doing well. He has to be a little bit more honest with us. I'm not honest. No. You're paying the price for it. I don't understand why you're not closer to your father. I don't understand why you're not open with that big Greek heart of yours. I, 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 I don't get it. It's time to change, you know? It's going to need a commitment from you. A commitment. It's father, son. And if you've got any chance of carrying on this legacy, then you need to be by his side. You won't teach me anything. It doesn't make sense. Have a word with him. Have a word. I'm struggling. Fuck me. I need to sit down, man. I'm tired. I don't want you to struggle here anymore. I'm fine, Dad. Just let me, let me, let me help. Let me help you. I want you to be ready. I told you that before, I was. I know. With my dad, even though he loves me and I love him, it's just, it's almost like I'm not good enough for him. It's a shitty feeling. It hurts. I love you. Gordon is still completely mystified by Mikey's lack of mentoring of Eris. You got two minutes, we'll catch up. Okay. Please. And he has only one other person to turn to for answers. So I'd love to hear from you. You know, why have they been ignoring each other? Well, when Eris went to college, he never really wanted to be here. And most of the time, he wouldn't be here at all. And he'd come like at night to dance and so forth. And uh when he graduated from college, we had his party here. And we had, I mean, the place was full. We had 100 people here or so. And when he was doing his little speech and thanking people for coming and everything, you know, he announced, I'm going to make something of my life. I'm not working in the restaurant. What? In front of all the staff? In front of all of his friends. Wow. I mean, how rude. You paid the fees for the college. He comes back and hosts a party in his parents' restaurants and then shits on them from a great height. Mm -hmm. I remember that <laughs> very well. Yeah. It was as if what we'd done all these years was, like, uh, worthless. Is Mikey sort of hurt? Do you think he still holds it against him? Yeah. Does he? Yeah, it's, he really does. Unbelievable. It hurt us very bad. I've always remembered it, never discussed it, never talked about it, but it hurt. Gordon has finally learned the real truth behind what's tearing this family apart. He announced, I'm going to make something of my life. I'm not working in the restaurant. What? And now Mike and Eris arrive at the restaurant unaware of what he has just uncovered. Pull a chair up, both sit down. I want to tell you something really important. I'm fucked off with you, and I'll tell you why. 
I don't think that you've quite understood the level of support that you've had in and out of here. And so when you turn around and told all your friends in your parents' restaurant that you're gonna make something out of yourself, almost in a way that you were disgusted with being brought up in a restaurant and this wasn't you, you were above that. Well, it wasn't me being above it. It was just, I didn't know if it at It was point, the way you declared it wasn't good enough for you. Well, this was before. I know. Yes. But you did it, and you shat on your own doorstep. I wasn't sitting on that. I, I love my family more I'm than anything. I'm telling you, you did. Well, I was, I was confused at the time, too. I didn't know what I was going to do with my life. I went to college. I didn't know if the restaurant business was something I was going to do, and I didn't know if I was ready to do it. But I don't think you've ever understood the ramifications of an announcement like that. How did you feel truthfully about that statement? Truthfully. My son, when I say something like that, it hurts me, yeah. Thank you. I mean, I, I'm not a perfect human Don't being. Don't look at me. No, I'm just saying Don't I'm look, not. No, no, if you've got anything to say, yeah. I'd say it to your mum and dad. Take the opportunity to give him a little bit of privacy. I didn't... I just see how we struggled as a family. Regardless if we're making money or not, we, we kill ourselves here. And I didn't want to kill myself either, not in a selfish way. I just didn't want to, I don't. But I guess I remember it because it really hurt me when you said it. I remember it. And I don't think it's anything that we've ever talked about. And I sincerely apologize for saying that because that was so wrong of me. Mom, Dad, I, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Love you. I think Mikey hasn't really taken Era seriously because he's never really gotten himself committed. But that has changed. And for him to make this declaration with such passion, he's definitely committed. I 100% believe that. Everything's going to work. It will. After Eris cleared the air with his parents, Chef Ramsay is still concerned about his commitment. OK. So I've been doing some thinking. Why have you hung around so long? It's, it's my family. It's like I don't, we don't give up on our family. And this is my, my home, too. So I love this place, and I want to fix it. But I don't know if you're committed enough, that's all. Because it's not about dancing on the dance no, floor. No, I know. But if you put that determination that you put on that fucking dance floor last night, yeah. carrying all those fucking tables in your mouth in the kitchen, trust me. You'd be untouchable here. That's what I want. I know at one point, I wouldn't have believed in me either. I've changed. I know I can do this. I just need support, and I just need my dad to help me. So you say you're committed. I right? am committed, yes. And you say that you're committed. Yes. Yes. So put both your hands together. Let go. <laughs> hands out. <laughs> now. Oh, shit. Yeah. Even if I'm right-handed. Don't care. You don't care. Because you're not cooking, you're going to be taught. Now, look at me. For the very first time in the history of father and son, get into that kitchen and show him something. I don't care if it's a simple Greek salad, a roasted fish, or whether it's a stunning hummus. I don't care. But show him. Show him. Now. Watch, don't pull me too much now. Don't be a bull. Getting handcuffed was a funny experience. I'm gonna need a plate to put it in. All right, well, I'll have to walk with you. My dad kind of is like this bull trying to <laughs> track me. <laughs> Let's make a pasta. Huh? You want pasta? This is exactly what I've been looking for, to have this opportunity. Mm -hmm. So let's do it. OK. Slice a tomato. Yeah, I can do it. How's that? Good. OK, let's put okay. the onions. We're going to wait on the garlic, right? Yeah. Is it cooks faster? Any seasonings that we put in or anything? Let's put some black pepper. A little sprinkle. Yeah. You want me to add some of the sauce? Yeah, add a couple of spoons of that. Cooking with my dad was great. Reduce a little bit, and then we're done. It really alleviated a lot of tension. And I'm proving him right now. I'm going to learn the kitchen. And I guess the only way you can ever learn is just to do it, right? Guess what we're doing. Pretty good, huh? There you go. Tastes great. Totally. It was a lot of fun for me and Harris to be that way. And I see that Harris has a passion about this restaurant, and I'm very proud. Gordon, we got it done. Show me Hold how to make a... What is that? Greek pasta. Uh-huh. Did you listen to your father? I did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How is that? Uh, yeah, it's nice. I've seen more consistency in this plate than I did in the whole of service last night. 
It did my heart good because this was a turning point. This was the first time that Mikey has ever really shown Eris any Greek cooking. Thank you. I have very strong feelings about my boy, that he's not a boy any longer, he's a man, and I'm ready to back off a little out of the way, his way. Are you committed to do it? Of course. <laughs> What I know, I would teach you. Everything. OK. OK? Sounds That's good. That's what I want. Now that it appears as though Mikey is finally passing the torch to Eris, Chef Ramsay and his team move ahead with the restaurant makeover. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Ready for a stunning new change? Yes. Yeah. Good. Today, we are saying goodbye to the past and opening the doors to your new future. Ready to see your restaurant? Off you go. Go in, go in, go in. Wow. Oh. Welcome to the new Greek. Wow. 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 Oh, my How goodness. beautiful is this? I love that blue. Beautiful. Awesome. Stunning. Nice. It's amazing. Wow. It's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. When I first walked in here, I saw a banquet hall with hideous chairs that was set up with no charm. So we've taken a tacky restaurant out of the 80s and put it into the 21st century. And the good news is, the disco balls have gone. <laughs> look at the ceiling. You've got the Greek windmills. Oh, look at that. Have a look at those beautiful tables. They were covered before. We got them sanded. We got them varnished. They're your own tables. Excellent. Gone are the murals. Why have a mural of a harbour on the wall when you're sat in front of the harbour? And look at that baby down there on the wall. <laughs> a custom-made Greek flag shutter. Wow. wow. Beautiful. Oh, shutter. Wow. This is outstanding. Complete joy is what I feel right now. Wow. Oh, oh Jesus. How are you? <laughs> huh? Wow. I have a goosebab on me. It feels totally like where I am now, in Santorini on the hill there. It feels like home. It's spectacular, beautiful. Mikey, I'd like to see you so lively like this. <laughs> Aren't you happy? Yes, I am. Yeah? I think this is one of your best so decorations <laughs> i ever seen. <laughs> this is. <laughs> I, I agree. I think it's one of my best also. <laughs> to go along with a dramatic makeover. Oh. Come down, all of you, please. Wow. Is an equally dramatic redesign of the menu. OK, just have a look at the menu. The dips, tzatziki, the hummus. Beautiful, not smeared on a plate, not sipped through a straw. <laughs> a proper dip, falafel. Look at them, small, dainty, delicious, and made with a spicy chickpea. Nice. Gyro, it's a homemade pate, OK? Wait till you taste it. You've got the grilled lamb chop. That's served with grilled artichokes, sun-dried tomatoes, yeah, arugula salad, and tazini sauce. The zucchini eggplant moussaka, layered with potatoes, topped with bechamel, a little chilli in there, so we've got some heat in there as well at the same time. Mm. Excited? Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is look, the best I've ever seen in my life. It's fresh. It's taken yes. part of what you put into this restaurant to begin with, and we've modernized it. You That's did. all. You did great. Yeah? Yes. OK, I want you all to dig in. All right. Have a little taste. OK, jump in. Mm. Mm. Oh, my god, it's amazing. Mm. Excellent. At the beginning, actually, I was, I was denying about the food, but this is the best food I ever have, Greek food. So good, the waffle's gone. Melts in your mouth, not dry. And the food's really, really good. I mean, it's amazing. Uh -huh. and it's a new direction, it's a new beginning, and I'm excited about it. This is really it's tastes good. good. It's really good. Mm. Mm. With the reins of the restaurant being handed over from father to son. OK, Mikey. Hi, Hi You ready? Great. Yeah? Chef Ramsay has Mikey working the salad station and Eris in the crucial role of expediter. You ready? Yes. OK, good. You do not take shit from them, yeah. and you're the last fucking line of defense. Don't let them throw food out at you. We have a new menu in line, awesome new recipes. I'm taking charge of this kitchen. I want to make sure people are following the recipes, and they're not fucking them up. Make me proud, boys. Let's do this. Hello. Word of the relaunch has spread, and the restaurant fills up quickly with eager diners. Hello. How are you doing? Hello. You're welcome to the Greek. Can I get the uh, uh, Amari would be great. OK. Our kitchen needs to be driven. Let's go. All right, first ticket up, guys. Two vegetarian moussakas. Fire those right away. OK, I know. Let me have that two zucchini moussakas, please. Ares is in charge of the kitchen tonight, but he has to step up and, and do this. I got the hummus. You guys got the moussakas. How much time? 
Two and a half minutes. Nice. All right, another ticket up. We got a shrimp and a calamari. All right, I got it. How much time on that calamari? Two minutes. Two minutes, let's do it. Good, that's what I want to hear. Push and encourage, push and encourage, yeah? Is the vegetarian moussaka up or no? Zucchini moussaka. In spite of it being his first time expediting. Kathy, you're up to come right back. Eris is looking very comfortable. Four minutes on the saganaki, watch the falafel. And a steady stream of orders are flowing out of the kitchen. We got the Greek salad. Here's your calamari. And the results are unanimous. That's so good. It's fantastic. I need a saganaki right away. 23 is up, OK? Back in the kitchen, under the watchful eye of Chef Ramsay. Watch the sauce. Put less in there next time. Yeah, I don't want it all pissing down the side, yes? Eris continues to perform. Don't rush. I need another no saganaki. How's it going? Last line of defense. You. I hope you're checking, yeah? That's all. I hope you're, I'm not going to let you throw food out tonight. I'd rather okay. stop. OK. I'll fucking go crazy at them. Let's go to table 11 here now. Ready? Good to take out? Yes. I got one more spot in the right? All right, Kelsey, you're up. You got another Branzino, another fisherman's catch. Here. There you go. All right, who's this for? Kathy? Just take it. Who's the chain? Is that cooked? All right. Is it? No. It's stone cold. It's raw. Stop. 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 Stop! It's relaunch night. Eris's big chance to finally prove himself. Guys, let's get it together. We got it. Come on. But just when it appears as though everything is on track. Who's this for? Kathy? Just take it. The kitchen is starting to unravel. Is that cooked? It's raw. Stop. 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 Look at me. If they're out of control and you're out of control, we're finished. Because you are maintaining the standards. Hey, hey, all of you, stop. One, two, three, four, five. You come here. Come here. Come here. Look at what you're sending out. That wasn't like the first table. I'm not sending that. And what the fuck is that? Come on, guys. Mush. Look at me. That's Look at me. Got it. You have to stay in control. You've got to stay in control, OK? Yeah. I can't let the kitchen fall apart. I'll do whatever it takes to get better. Let's slow it down. Slow down. Slow down. Thank what, you. Take it at a time. Standards. Right Standards. now. Standards. Tell them up. All right, table 32, how are we looking? And where's the fisherman's catch? I don't want to see shit go out, guys. Come on. Make sure it's cooked and good, all right? A very determined Eris clearly has his focus back. This chicken sit here too fucking long. Finally. He's catching mistakes. This is the beef moussaka that you asked for. It's fucking cold in the oh, center, no. guys. Come on. And quickly getting them fixed. Panos, you're going to have to reheat this. Let's get that done before all we right. continue, guys. Make sure it's quality. Listen to him. Yes, stop throwing food. Well spotted. Look at me. This is transition. This is it. Yes. OK, guys, this is a team effort, all right? You guys with me? Yes. OK, good. You guys got okay. this. Come on. Good. That's what I want to hear. Can you Musaka 33? Awesome. Ozzy, take this. Good. Keep it going. You guys, we need a little bit more sauce on that meat. Nice. I need one more calamari, guys. The calamari is coming. Thank you. <laughs> fire the chicken, fire the lamb chops. You hear him on the whole place? Yeah, I hear him. Let's focus on table 25 and table 30. He's doing good. Yeah. Can you believe that's just some? No. I was surprised a little bit, but Ares did a great job for the first time expediting. Just wipe it down. I'm very proud of my sample. Oh, my God. <laughs> no, how do you guys like the new menu? It's great. It's awesome. Yes. Awesome. Good. They loved it. Not one complaint. I just need the lamb burger and we're done. Coming up now. Let's finish this shit. Come on. Ares is totally in control of the line expediting. And table by table by table, he's stepped up. It's so good. It was good. I'm stuck. And that's a fabulous feeling. <laughs> no, that was awesome. Well done. Seriously, well done. We had an excellent relaunch. Yes, we had our bumps. But my God, there was an amazing buzz in there tonight. <laughs> a dramatic change. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Customers love the food, yeah, love the decor, but the big transformation tonight was Aris. <laughs> <laughs> you nailed it. You did a phenomenal job. Thank you. I've never seen anyone, and I really mean this, take to expediting the way you did tonight. That was your first time, and it felt like you've been doing it for 10 years. Mikey, how was that for you? To listen to him controlling the kitchen. Yeah, you know, he did a great job. It's very impressive. Seth Ramsey came and united us together. My son and I will be very successful. I believe that. Stay together as a family, because when it works, it's beautiful. Of course. This family right here, we're unbreakable. Thank you. Stay in there. I will. Yeah, look after him. Thank you very much. 
because of Chef Ramsay. My dad believes in me, and he knows I can do anything. I have a lot of work to do personally to learn the kitchen, but I'm an ambitious young man, and I'm ready to do it. If you've got the win in the cell, <laughs> run with it, OK? Thanks again. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you, Gordon. Wow, when I first arrived, this restaurant was a big fat Greek mess. We made a lot of changes, some dramatic changes to the food, the decor, but more importantly, to Aris. And now, that guy has his feet firmly on the ground. This restaurant has every chance of not becoming a Greek tragedy. Oopa! What the fuck was he doing with those tables? In the days that followed, Eris continued to embrace his role as leader of the kitchen. Go ahead, take that out. 33 is next, guys. I need a vegetarian moussaka. And is determined to maintain the high standards that Chef Ramsay put in place. Hey, the fish is raw. Guys, watch the fish. With Eris in complete control yeah. and new customers packing the restaurant on a nightly basis. I love it. Mikey is considering doing something he thought he would never do. It's good to change. Yes. Yeah. Has to be done. Retire. Mikey is so proud of Eris. We all are. He's really proof that he's committed to make this restaurant be the best it can be. Fries, we need fries. Let's do it. Chef Ramsay, thank you so much. Eris's future is definitely bright, and so is the Greeks. Great job. I love you all. <laughs> you. College Park, Georgia, only 20 minutes from downtown Atlanta, this suburb is home to the world's busiest airport. And just down the street from the tarmac is a smokehouse called Michon's, opened in 2002 by the Wilson family. I used to be in, in sales, but I've always wanted to own a restaurant, especially a barbecue restaurant. So that's what I decided to do. Our daughter is Natalie Michon, and we decided that that was a great name for the restaurant because our passion, our goal was to pass it to Natalie. Enjoy. The restaurant did great. This was my daddy's baby. With Mr. Al being at the top, it made everything work really smoothly. It's out of college right here. Things went good, you know, for a long time here. And unfortunately, you know, Al had got sick and he had to have an operation. My dad had a collapsed lung. The doctor told my dad just to stay home and take a break. Chest started hurting a little bit, so I need to really go lay down. A lot of things have gone downhill in the kitchen since Al has been out. Excuse me, when was the brisket smoked? Because it's cold. Since Mr. Al is sick, the cooks do what they want to do. We're a captainless ship. Yeah, whatever, dude. Go take a nap, dog. Our food is nasty. And then when you go to take it back to get another plate, they'll complain about it or they'll argue. Don't come outside kicking. And then you touch your customer's hands, do I? And I'll come back here dropping smoke wings, do I? But if it tastes like shit, don't nobody want to eat that. The majority of the stuff in here is already prepped. Like the smoked meats, you're reheating those. All the sides are ready. All you're doing is scooping and putting it in a bowl. Is everything OK? The customers are walking out of here unsatisfied. It was slow as hell out here yesterday. What I would love to see is my daughter run the place, but she's just not doing, you know, the, the job. You never see Natalie in the kitchen. You may see her in passing, or maybe she's hungry. Can you hand me a, uh, spoon a fork or a spoon, please? She'll come in and get her some breakfast, or just come in here and rub her stomach. That's good. Natalie pretty much feels she can pass the book. I'm ready to go home. Al and I have a certain work ethic. Natalie does not necessarily share that work ethic. The type of manager that I am, I'm more hands off. I'm a little bit more relaxed when it comes to problems. It's too much wasted energy to be frustrated. Well, I have cameras that spotted around the restaurant that I can check from my house, and, and I'm seeing things, but not going like it should be. Everyone set their macaroni and cheese back. Between the bills, the rent, and all of the overhead, you know, we like $200,000 in the hole. We are really at the point now where we need Chef Ramsey to just help us, or it will be the end of the road. Before heading to the restaurant, Chef Ramsey has agreed to get together with Michon's owner, Al, who requested a meeting. Hey, uh, 
Gordon. How are you? How? Good, good to see you. Yeah, thanks for meeting me here. Not at all. Good yeah. to see you too. Please yeah. take a seat. Oh, okay. Good to meet you. Yeah, same here. Um, talk to me. The restaurant. It's uh, family run, my daughter and, and my wife. But, uh, you know, I'd really want to retire, to be honest with you. Right. I just need to get my daughter to take over and run it. But... So the plan's for you to hand the reins over to her? Correct. Because I've been in sort of bad health. Uh, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, and it's still giving me some problems. And you mentioned your daughter. How old is she? Uh, she's 32. 32. And so how capable is she? She has the smarts. Right. You just need to get get it out of her. Right. I mean, it sounds like she's been handed this amazing restaurant on a plate. Correct. And you're frustrated that she can't take the reins. And go with it. And go with it. That's it. And when you had the medical problem, and obviously you're out of the business, how did that run then? Not really. Going, it fell apart. Right. I was watching it the best I could. So you were watching from way. home? Yeah, I got a little a security cameras I can see from my house and from the restaurant. You watch your restaurant on a security camera? Yeah. I've got about 18 cameras. 18 cameras? Yeah, 18. Ow. I just like to see what they do. <laughs> That's it. Well, I'm going to get myself into the restaurant, and I'm going to have a good look yeah. around. OK. With my eyes, not your cameras. Thank you. I'll see you back at the restaurant. Thank you. Thanks for coming. OK. I'll drive carefully. Okay. Thanks, Al. <laughs> building. Wow. Hello. Hello, hello. How are you? Fine, how are you? Nice to see you. Yay. Nice to see you, Gordon. Right. Hi. How Natalie. Are you? I'm Natalie, good. Nice how are to see you? you. So, um, the Michon name came from? My middle name is Michon. Ah, OK. So the restaurant's been named after you. Right. Wow. The decor is stunning. Look at this place. Thank you. Um, so, I met your uh, amazing dear husband earlier. I had a quick catch up and he told me a few things. Um, I'd love to know from both of you, um, your role is what? Well, I love being upfront with the customers. Right. And your main role in day to day business? The human resources, HR. Wow. So I do payroll and different things like that. So I hide in the back a lot. You hide in the back? <laughs> I stay in the back. I do a lot of the paperwork and okay. different things like that. So you're not really functioning in the restaurant. And according to Al, there seems to be things right now that you could do that you haven't been doing. Really? When was the last time you took pressure off him? Mm. Are you always this flat? No. No. I'm just soaking in how you said that I'm not doing much. So. Yeah, no, I just like, wow, God, if that was my father and mother yeah. would get me a restaurant like that with my name over the door, I don't want to be sleeping here. Mm -hmm. I would be doing a little bit more than uh, HR. I'm dying to taste the food, yeah? Please? He basically told me that I'm just kind of like the lazy child with just my name on a building. That pisses me off, and I feel disrespected in my own restaurant. He said, you don't do anything here but payroll? No, you didn't throw me under the bus. You threw me up under the train. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Yes, we'll let you look through the menu, and I'm going to bring you to just starter wings. Is that OK? Brilliant. Right. Thank you. OK. What I'm looking forward to Chef Ramsey doing is to say things to Natalie that I would not dare say. Because we are her parents, it's more than a business relationship. There is the personal relationship. Hello, how are you doing today? How are you? I'm doing fine. Welcome to Michonne's. My name Thank is Tadisha. I'll be your server this evening. It's a lovely name. Hair looks immaculate. My goodness me. Mm. <laughs> he ain't never seen a beautiful, thick black girl like me, so that's what that was. He liked all these curls and stuff. Are you that high maintenance, or is it just a special day today? <laughs> it's a special day today. <laughs> we don't make hardly any money here, so I ain't about to pay this every week. Mm -mm. Um, you've been here how long? I've been here for two and a half years. Two and a half years. Yeah, in your mind, what's wrong? What's the biggest issue here? Management. Management. Wow. So what does Natalie do? Um. Truthfully. What's her role? She makes sure we get paid. Mm-hmm. And that's about it. Right. OK. Natalie, she got issues. She lays it. I said it. That's, it is what it is. OK. Let's start off with smoked chicken, gourmet salad. OK. Beef uh, brisket, pork ribs. And what sides? Cornbread, mashed potatoes, and the potato salad as well. Uh, potato salad, we can't do because we don't have it. No potato salad? No. Really? Yeah, the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Kitchen one? They don't like to peel potatoes. <laughs> well, it's true. 
Okay. Green beans, please, and baked beans. Obviously, black eyed peas. Okay, I didn't hear you say sweet potato oh, souffle. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Collard greens, mac and cheese, please. I'll go ahead and get your food. Yes, please. Oh, thank you. And that is the mm, smoked chicken wing. And when were they smoked this morning? They were smoked this morning. Lovely. Yes. Smells nice. Right. Enjoy. Thank you. What a shame, because it's the sauce. It's lovely. But me, it's all dry. That's disappointing. So I'm anxious to know what you thought. Yeah, do you know what? A bit inside it was dry. Was yeah. it? Yeah, we just find out when they were smoked. I will. Thank you. Take the Thank you. I'm shocked that Chef Ramsay does not like our smoke wings. That just pisses me off, because he's definitely wrong. Thank you. Yeah, what a shame they were dry, the chicken. <laughs> Welcome to Michonne's. Yeah, at least they should be moist. Why would they be dry? Because it's bootleg. Bootleg? Mm-hmm. They just don't care. Thank you. Wow. Is this this morning's batch? I think that's yesterday's batch. This is yesterday's batch? OK, chef. I have to eat crow. Those are yesterday's wings. Damn. See, I knew they didn't taste fresh. And why are they oh, serving yes. yesterday's wings today? Can't I get today's wings today? I don't know. Oh. Uh, anyway, just asking. All right, are we ready to rock and roll? Go on, salad and all these sides. OK. Let's go. OK. Let's go. It's enough. Oh, there you go. Lovely, thank you. Uh, God, that was quick. Holy mackerel. There you are, sir. Thank you very much. You're welcome. That's my uh, smoked chicken gourmet salad. Um, gross. They're rotten tomatoes. Oof. Where's my lovely lady? Where, I'm where? right here. I'm sorry, though. The tomatoes, they got old and sort of yucky and soggy. I wasn't shocked at all. Thank you, please. Mm -hmm. Have you seen the kitchen? Yeah, they don't care. Um, the, uh, uh, um, mm. the tomatoes, one of them is old, and the other one has, like, a ripe thing on it. I don't think it's a problem, but... <laughs> really? But I'm not a chef, so I don't, you know, I don't know. I think it's fine, but... That's right. Your name is only on the bell, though. Get it right. They look dry. It's dry and chewy, but it should sort of fall off the bone, but it's just dry. Cornbread. Oof. Mm. Oh, Jesus. Now that's really dry. Look, it's just like being in the Sahara Desert, but it's like a mouthful of sand. It's like sand in an hour at last. You're ready to fuck up all this man food. Damn. They mess up everybody's food. Hmm. Black eyed peas. Wow. Hideous. Absolutely shocking. All right, here we are. All right, sit down. Sit down. <laughs> All right. Yeah, right. Close your eyes. OK. What the hell? Do not open your eyes. I don't want to eat that. Our food is nasty. Open up. Mmm. What does that taste of? Nasty. What was that? Hmm. Black eyed peas. You can open them now. Yeah, they nasty. Black eyed bullets. He hit the nail on the head. We got some problems. Thank you. You're welcome. I need a drink after this. <sighs> I'm in Georgia, right? Yeah. Now I feel like I'm in prison. Huh? They're dreadful. Baked beans, canned, damn. Mm. Color greens. Wow, gross. Way too sweet. Hideous. Beef brisket. Damn, it's rubbery. Dry and chewy. Look at that. You could pass that for beef jerky. It's like a, it's like a dog chew. I don't know too much about smoking. I don't even know nothing about cooking, but I know that ain't right. Okay, can you take me through the kitchen? There's gonna be some shit around here. Serving brisket like that, I don't know where the fucking start. Oh, 
god, you're the chef. After sampling the menu that can best be described as miserable. Serving brisket like that, I don't know where the fucking start. Chef Ramsay wants to have a little chat with the people who are responsible. Oh god, you're the chef. Where's Al? Dead. Yeah. Come in, please. So this is Arch. Archie. Archie. And this is Terence. Terence. Yes, sir. How you doing, sir? Good to see you, bud. And this is Terrell. Terrell, come over, bud, so I can see you. And this is Kelvin. Kelvin. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, another chef. Come through. Joe. Joe. So, who's the head chef? Does anyone know? I don't do the cooking, but I'm. You don't do the cooking? No, sir. Not the uh, small meat. Something not quite right here. What do you do here? I smoke some meat. Was there anything that I tasted today that was smoked today? Uh, brisket. This piece of shit here was smoked today. No, not today. Not today. Does that look appetizing? No, sir. That does not. When was that cooked? I believe on Saturday. On Saturday? So today's Tuesday. Do you honestly think that customers would walk through that door thinking that you're smoking meats? Three or four days before eating them. How are you eating them? You're microwaving them. Microwaving them. Come on. It's disgusting. For God's sake. Is there anything today that I ate that wasn't microwaved? The salad. The salad? Yeah. You fucking donut. Of course you don't put no, a but fucking salad. Than it wasn't you. Guys, I'm not laughing. I'm seriously disappointed. And Natalie, you don't need me in here to tell you that brisket is like dog chew. If my parents named a restaurant after me, I'd make sure that was the fucking best smoked brisket. My daughter doesn't do what needs to be done to get this restaurant back in shape. It's just, you know, I don't have the words for it right now. I don't know what to say. I just fuck it up. I'm lost for words. After a lunch that was almost entirely microwaved, Chef Ramsay braces himself for his first observation of a dinner service. Good evening. Welcome to Michonne's. And for you, sir. Okay. All right, y'all. Let's go for round two. <laughs> Chop pork working hard, homie. What's that noise? The microwave. Fucking hell, the microwave. What is that? That's seafood dip. Three rib tips. That's how they do things. They're just throwing stuff in the microwave, and it's ridiculous. Jeez, what are they there? Rip tips, rip tips. What's with all the bag stuff? They portion everything and put it in bags. It's just madness. You're not even cooking, you're just reheating. Where's all this coming from? I don't know. That's how we've been reheating it. Have you know. been to another restaurant in Atlanta? Have you seen a restaurant? I haven't been in another You've kitchen. never been to another kitchen, now. It's tearing me up inside of the moment. I mean, I've, I've never seen anything like this. I mean, it'll... Ever. Chef Ramsay is criticizing every single thing that we do. Just because he doesn't like it doesn't mean that it's wrong. Show me the smokers. All right, this please. One. Wow, look at them. I mean, do you know what hurts more than anything? The fact that we, we have the most amazing equipment, and yet the product is shit. Brisket, turkey, chicken, smoked in these. Then we slice it, bag it, chill it. Then we reheat it in the microwave. Does that make sense? Could you have another, please? Wow, look at that. So how long have they been in? How long have these been cooking? Yeah. Hey, so they went in two and a half hours ago. So they're ready for dinner. Yeah, right. ready. These. Little taste. Now. That's delicious. That's what I'm screaming for. They're, right. they're ready. They're delicious. Right. We're reheating yesterday's fucking wings, and they're just immaculate. Natalie, don't open the door and then disappear. I need to talk to you urgently. So we have Rolls Royce and smokers here. Pretty amazing. And you got these that are literally minutes off the smoker. Right. And yet we can't hold them and serve. That's what we were trying to figure out. It's a no-brainer. Natalie hasn't proven to be able to run this restaurant. It's not any structure, it's just a bunch of guys doing their own things. That does not make sense. How much do those smokers cost? They Roughly. cost um, 17000 each. 17 grand each? Yes. So here you are, cooking to perfection and reheating the food in a $200 microwave. How does that make sense? While the fresh, tasty meat from the smoker gets held for another day, 
The kitchen sends out plate after plate of reheated food. Beef brisket. Not moist. And not surprisingly, there is disappointment in the dining room. Let's try. Did that go out? It's like a dog shat on the side of it. Oh, no. Go on. Oh, the chicken's really, really dry. Yeah, they're right. Tell me, the bone's dry. Guys, this burger's supposed to be well done. Leave me alone. Where's all that going? They didn't like them. All right. Yeah. They just said they didn't like them. Natalie did nothing. This is your business, and y'all don't care. Fuck me. Is that normal for so much food to come back? Yes, yes. The whole place is disorganized. It's running with no leader. Absolutely right. It was such a disappointment because Natalie is letting us down. She needs to step up to the plate. As dinner comes to an end, Gordon's inspection of the kitchen is just beginning. What's that in there? Chicken's cooked six days ago. And in here? That, they were the ones yesterday, and these ones in here? And these ones in here? But if you cooked them yesterday, why did they cook them yesterday? Look, there must be a 1,000 wings there. These people don't even deserve to be running a restaurant, let me tell you. I have never seen so many wings in my life. Piping hot, stuck in a refrigeration unit. I suppose it's what you call winging it. Yes, there's more. That is nasty. I mean, it's like a mass grave. At $1.67 a wing. Look at that. Appalled by his discovery of how much of the food is pre-cooked. Look, there must be a 1,000 wings there. Chef Ramsay is determined to give Natalie and her kitchen staff a massive reality check. Can you just come in the kitchen with me? Please, uh, all of you, thank you. Let's go. Let's go. What the fuck? Wow. Are you kidding me? Oh, my god. Wow. wow. Oh, my god. Why do you have 100 smoked wings? Like, <laughs> you can't be for real. I am absolutely mortified. What in the hell is going on? We've served 100 customers, and we're carrying all this food until tomorrow, or the next day, or who knows? And we have a smoker in there full of fresh wings. And I could have cried to think that this was served first before the fresh ones. I've never seen a more fragmented, disorganized setup. I've never, ever seen anything like this. Just looking at that food on the counter like that, I'm like, wow, really, really shocking. I look at it like, you know, that could be going in my pocket as far, you know, as a raise or whatever. You've got the most equipped kitchen ever, a stunning dining room, and look at the amount of staff in here. But all the advantages can't fix the mentality of how we're working, with our head up our ass, rudderless. The biggest problem, the system. Tell me about it. And you accept it because you send it. You confirm that's good enough. You have your name in lights, and you can sit there and depend on your parents for another 30 years. Someone's going to have to step up. If these are what we cook this evening, at the end of the evening, do we throw them away? It's easy. How many, how many customers do we have tonight? 100. How many portions of wings do we sell? Roughly 25? Yep. That stops there. I don't need to tell you that. I just think you're in denial. No, I'm not in denial. I'm, I'm learning. But darling, by learning needs getting involved, taking responsibility. All right. Matt, can I have a word with you, please? Everybody else just stay here. Count the fucking wings. I had no clue Chef Ramsay would be this critical. Chef Ramsay does not understand a lot of the ways we do things here. He was overboard. You've got your name in lights. This restaurant's named after you. Tell me one to one why you haven't stepped up. Just because you don't, I'm not going to sit up here and holler and scream. No one's I'm asked you to holler. And do you know what? I wouldn't walk around like Little Miss Perfect. And I don't. Yes, you do. No, I don't. Yes, you do. No, I don't. Yes, you do. The biggest problem is you've never heard it enough. Okay. 
been brought into this world with a silver spoon. You can't sponge. You have to get off your ass and do something about it. What are we going to look at? Your father? Get mum to step up? Honestly, hand the reins over and let's get somebody else in here if you are not going to step up to the plate. I'm not just walking in here every day not doing anything. You are. Get your head out of the fucking smoker. You've been handed a restaurant on a plate, a stunning restaurant, and yet you don't seem to bother. I'm very bothered. You blow smoke up my ass? How dare you? I'm the HR manager. I would have had you fired in two minutes. The bottom line is, you don't want it. Joke. You're right. It is clear that Natalie's lack of leadership has resulted in a frustrated and ineffective staff. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Jeff. To get through to her, Gordon has asked the family to stay in the office so they can observe a staff meeting by way of the surveillance cameras. That was a crazy 24 hours, right? Yes. So for me, I want to find out what the issues are. There's the kitchen lacking a leader. Yes. Yes. Like, that's yes. where all our problems come in. So that's why they all act like that. Sure, but I mean, who decides who's working where? In the kitchen. Who does they the time job? They just fall into place. You do your own? Yeah. Well, when we come in, I, what? To, to, to save the frustration and get through the night. When we come in, I ask you where you want to work at. Seriously? Seriously. OK, why do they keep switching people around? If we know Kino is the strongest in the middle, why on Fridays and Saturday night Kino is in the damn back prepping food? It makes no sense and That's where we're going to suffer. Why is that? If you're not going to work where we need you, how are we going to get stuff done? The thing is, and the key word, it's not consistent. This is my thing to y'all. We get, well, we don't have this. Once we've gotten to a table and rung a table in, oh, didn't we tell y'all we don't have it? That is not the most cop. That's like dumb. Half the time we tell y'all, y'all don't listen. You know what I mean? What, you want me to show you the empty bucket? No. No, I don't want you to show me an empty bucket. I didn't say Come that. It was all on you. I'm it's, saying it's a two-way street, but guess what? Well, Big stuff will steal stuff. And when we find out Everything's just run down, dwindled. Pretty much everybody just do what they want to do. Everybody's going at each other because it's, it's just you know, no one running things. So everything is just hostile. If we had a leader in that kitchen, this place I honestly believe would be like night and day. But we need that direction. Are we not gaining direction from Natalie? No. Oh. No. Nellie doesn't step up to the plate as she should. It's so aggravating. This is your establishment. I mean, come on. But bottom line, the ship ain't gonna move without a captain. That's it. Got to have some leadership, chef. Period. It's so frustrating. No one's, no one's got the reins. And it's heading for a disaster. OK, just give me two seconds, please, yeah? It was painful to see and hear a lot of that conversation. I feel like a lot of the blame came on me today, and it hurts. There's a cry for help there. Otherwise, none of you would be here. They are begging for, for guidance, for a right. leader, for a captain, for a, a guiding light, an inspiration that's here, you know, 10, 12 hours a day, and there's finding that structure. Right. You know, this is serious. Natalie, do you think you are ready to step up and grab the bull by the horns? and shake this place. I know I'm ready to step up. Do you want to? I want to. Come with me two seconds. Come up. Gay, come over. Please. I want to hear from you telling your parents, yeah, how much you want this and what it means to you. Um. said to me, and you said, I didn't do this for nobody else but you. And you said you can either run the business and take it on, or you can decide to sell it. I wanted to make sure that my dad's vision and my dad's dream came true. And I'm going to work hard to make sure that's what it is. And I, I, I want you to trust me. Yes. Are you happy with that? Happy when I'm looking for a big hut. <laughs> it was really amazing her telling me and my wife that she can do it. And I hope she'll refocus herself to, to really get the business and keep it going. If you're ever, ever going to let go, now's the time. Mm -hmm. Shines is a, a very important legacy to my father. This is his whole life, so I'm here for him.
that Natalie has expressed her commitment to do what it takes to lead the restaurant. I know I'm ready to step up, and I want you to trust me. Chef Ramsay is committed to her. First of all, I was very touched watching you step up and telling your parents how much you want this. Do you know what? I believe you. I'm by your side now, 110%. Okay. Don't be scared of making mistakes. Don't worry about that. Okay. Yeah, I've made thousands. Chef Ramsay has opened my eyes to a lot. At first, I was kind of skeptical. I was kind of hurt. But I trust his judgment now. I've got something very important to discuss with you. I want you to nominate someone that's going to step up and become your head cook. Someone that mends the smoker, that coordinates the purchasing, that controls everything. <laughs> Running through your mind now. Let's go in the kitchen. The kitchen lacks a leader. And that's where I need to start first. All right, guys, listen two seconds, please. Natalie wants a quick word with you all. All right, gentlemen. So this is going to be some new waters right now for all of us. Terrence, you've been here for years. You've always had your heart in the right place. From here on out, I want you to be the head of this kitchen. Good. For Natalie to make me a leader in this kitchen, I'm very excited about it. I'm ready for the challenge. Let's get this team rolling and make sure that we have put forth 100%. Got it. It felt great to take the reins. This is the way it's supposed to be. I finally have a sense of where I need to go to move this restaurant forward. You've got the badge now. Step up to the plate. That's it. Yeah? Yep. Good. Now that the restaurant's leadership is in place, Chef Ramsay has an important transformation of his own to present to the staff. Good morning. How Good are morning you? Good morning to you all. Nice to see you. First of all, where's Al? He's at home resting. Good. OK. It's time to show you a menu deserving of this beautiful restaurant. Ready? Yes. Come over to the bar, please. Oh, goodness. Wow. Hey. Darling, please take one and pass them along. New menu. It's easy to read. It's just a lovely, straightforward, stunning menu. And more importantly, <laughs> there's not a restaurant anywhere in a 100-mile radius that has spent the money you spent on those smokers. Those smokers is equivalent to having four other members of full-time staff in your kitchen. You just wasn't using it properly. So with the way we've incorporated it, it's the backbone of the menu. OK, let's start off at the top here. A pulled pork sandwich done with delicious corn puree running through the middle. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, yes. Absolutely amazing. Next to that, we've got the most amazing beef brisket. Ooh. A stunning half chicken. Delicious. Smoked chicken wings. Look at the size of them. Do we need to serve any more than that than a portion? And I've noticed the sauces. Every table has those amazing sauces. It's beautiful. It's, it's the look that I want to put out there. I feel great. Yeah? I am so happy. I have a special gift for you because you are now running this place. I'd like to introduce you to someone very special, Chef Adam. Good morning. How are you? Great. How are you? Good to see you. This young man, he's an expert in barbecue. He's been trained under Tom Caligio. I've arranged for him to be with you for the next month. Great. What do you think the smokers back there? They're brilliant. I'm very excited. So a guiding light, a huge support. And you, if you don't pick up on this and stay close to this guy for the next month, hey, you don't have to worry about that. You're crazy. No, you don't have to worry about that. <laughs> Chef Adam is a lifesaver, and I don't even think he realizes how much, you know, I love him already. OK, bud. Thank you. Thank you. See you shortly, yes? Nice to meet you. I'm ready to eat. I'm looking at all eat? this food, and I'm oh, ready to oh, eat. Dig in, dig in, dig in. Oh, wow, yes. Oh, my God, mm. it is good. It was absolutely delicious. I am past excited about selling fresh products. I think I could do a cartwheel in the dining room if there weren't so many tables in here. You know your rib is good, but you can use your fork to break it apart. Everything tastes so good. Oh, my God. I need a plate. I'm very proud to sell this food. I hope that this new menu is symbolic of change to show that we'll just keep rising to the top. Now, who gonna wheel me out of here? That's what I wanna know. With the relaunch approaching, Terrence gears up for his new role as head chef. Chef Kino, you ready to roll? Got my game face on, boss. And Natalie, with the support of her new consultant, Adam, embraces her new role as leader. 
If there's ever a time to make your mark, it's tonight. Right. Hold the reins and let them know that you're the boss. Okay. Let's go, baby. I'm ready. Let's go. I'm very anxious to show Chef Ramsay that I can do this. I can be the Mashan of Mashans. As the doors open for Michon's relaunch, diners are lined up around the block, eager to try the new menu. Yeah, it's gonna be pretty full, so as soon as you can get here. And to help generate even more positive buzz, Chef Ramsay has invited a group of the city's most influential barbecue experts. This big table here are very, very important, and they have a festival that has 15,000 turn out. This is it. This first impression is going to be this lasting impression. We need to do well. Hello, my name is Michonne. I'm one of the owners here. And I just wanted to personally thank you for coming, because I hear that you guys are <laughs> barbecue folks, too. I think we're going to do the smoke meat platter. And the fried pickles? All right. The catfish nuggets, it's to die for. Oh, really? Here we go. Who's pulling out? Talk to each other, guys. I need a smoked chicken sandwich. Got your smoked chicken sandwich. I need a catfish nugget, please. With Natalie feeling confident that the kitchen is in good shape in Terrence's hands. See, I'll be back in five minutes. Yeah, I've got it, boss. I got it. She heads to the dining room to check in on the customers. If you've been here before, you notice we made several changes. As I was walking through the restaurant, I was pumped. All of our meats here that we smoke on premise, our meat is very tender, so. <laughs> I felt good. I was doing my job well, and everything was great. OK. But minutes later, back in the kitchen, the cooks are having a hard time adapting to the new menu. Where's the fries? I need fries. And are having problems finding a rhythm. Hey, guys, we should be waiting for fries. Food is hanging too long. I've got entrees there, entrees there. So you're just stuffed. I'm starving. It's been like 28 minutes. So maybe we need to have They wait 30 minutes for their fried chicken. Oh, no, 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 come on. I need coleslaw. Talk to me, three big eggs. I need them down, please. You're still going to put the corn on it, yeah? Right? Still want the corn on that. Well, at that moment, I got them overwhelmed, you know, because everyone knows that this food is behind. Guys, we're getting complaints about long ticket time. So now everybody's morale is just like fail. We need to all be off the same page, guys. We've got ourselves in a situation. Customers are complaining. I don't want one more dish in that window until we get this board cleared. I don't know how we're going to turn this around. This is a fucking nightmare. It's 45 minutes into Michon's relaunch. We're getting complaints about long ticket time. And although the cooks are pushing food out, they are not completing an order. And as a result, food is sitting at the pass. I don't want one more dish in that window until we get this board cleared. And customers are sitting hungry. It's starving. Including the VIPs. So they're getting backed up in the kitchen. Okay. okay they're panicking. And all they're doing is they're putting their food up in the window. Okay. One plate on top of another plate. Okay. Food's drying out. Okay. So they have to take a breather, clear the board, and start again. OK. Chef Ramsay pulling me to the side helped me know that it's my job to jump in the kitchen and make sure that the cooks are actually listening. I need a fried catfish, and I need that fish fillet like yesterday. Tara, you know, I need you to listen to me. Yes. I need you to make sure that I start another ticket Okay. until we go ahead and clear. Okay. Claude, I really need to make sure that you're focusing and making sure that you're not just putting plates up. All right, y'all, let's roll. Yes, ma'am. Let's start. Got a lot of stuff holding up here. I need three wings on the fly, and I really got to get the burger because that's holding up the window. Good. Keep it going, yeah? I was frustrated because I still got food in the window. Waiting on a fried catfish, guys. But Nelly's made me settle down. Yeah, the sky's not falling. Let's just focus, breathe, and get the food out. Come on, line. We've had this hit before. How long am I black and snapper? Black and snapper working hard, chef. While Natalie has helped her kitchen navigate their way back on course. Keep on talking, guys. Let's go. She has also come up with an idea on how to entertain her special guests. Um, I would like to show you our smokers. We had some hiccups, so I took the barbecue festival guys to go out and look at the smokers. Oh. These are our babies right here. These are about four years old. Each smoker holds 700 pounds. Yes, you can. They were just so excited. Well, I like to see people's face light up. We'll have wings on four or five racks at a time. Nice. What's the cook time? The brisket is about 12 to 14 hours, depending on the weight. OK. I think I did pretty good tonight. That's more expensive. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Natalie's quick thinking has not only delighted the barbecue experts, Macaroni and cheese and a souffle, I can go. Right here. It has also bought the kitchen the time they needed to catch up. Nuggets. Make the nuggets. Enjoy. Uh, All right, y'all, how we doing? Doing good. Kino, how we doing? 
Beautiful. Okay. Natalie helped us get back on track. Very vocal, very visual, communicating with us. Is this coming out now? This is complete. Then take it. While Natalie has impressed her staff, the menu is a big hit with diners. Thank you. All right. I'm amazed. Seeing customers with smiles on their face, we haven't had that in forever, years. <laughs> Those are some of the best ribs I've ever put in my mouth. Wow, uh, that's great. I'm so happy. It was Natalie's night tonight. I think she did a great job. Bye, thank you so thank much. You. Come back and see us. All right, thank you. Worked your butts off. For me, the big difference was the way that you still, under immense pressure, worked together. Give yourselves a round of applause. Come on, come on. Okay. And you know what? You have an exciting, dynamic owner tonight. You were tested and you did a terrific job, let me tell you. And Al, he wasn't here this evening. God bless him. He's probably watching from his bed. <laughs> <laughs> OK, but you did him proud, let me tell you. Chef Ramsay has been a real influence on Natalie. And now that Natalie is in charge, the future for Michonne's is very bright. Right, well done. All of you, well done. Thank you, Chef. Thank, 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 Thank you. I'm glad that Chef Ramsay came down to give me a swift yeah. kick to show me that I can do it and help me show my parents that I can do it. Thank you, bud. I didn't realize when Al made his plea that he'd be too ill to be with us here for relaunch night. But this restaurant, led by his daughter now and her loyal staff, made a major transformation tonight. My hope is now that he gets well and has the pleasure of seeing his baby becoming a big success. Wow, how ironic. Two miles from the airport, you finally earned your wings. Good night, Georgia. After Chef Ramsay left, Natalie showed she is more committed than ever to carrying on her father's legacy. How are you? Welcome to Michonne's. And with Chef Adam's training, Terrence is in complete control of the kitchen. I got another rib and fries. Got you. As for Al, he now has what he always wanted, a successful restaurant run by the one person he built it for his daughter, Natalie. Austin, Texas. Home to over 50,000 students that attend the University of Texas. Located only blocks away is El Greco, an authentic Greek restaurant opened in 2007 by Jake and his mother, Athena. This is my favorite one. I always want to open that restaurant. I always love to cook. Let's do this. You're awesome, guys. Come on. My mother wanted uh, to open up a restaurant. I love to cook, so my mother brought her sister down, and we opened up a restaurant. I got a hummus appetizer. I get that going. I was so excited to open. The first half a year was very, very busy. Thank you. Welcome. Let's get this. Come on, guys. Those were good times. I mean, it was busy all day long. It was thriving. I mean, every day, just in and out, packed. But Jake is a big reason why everything is screwed up. In the last year, I would say, it's really turned around to be pretty disappointing. Wait a day. On a typical day, Jake would spend three, maybe four hours here. Jake is not here. Not all in a row. Smile and wave. You freaking abandoned us again. I'm not spending as much time as I used to in the restaurant. I'm just tired of coming into work knowing that I got to deal with my mother. Come on, guys. Athena, it's going. I know he's not. Athena, stop. Get the water. Stop yelling. Nag, nag, nag. She nags constantly. Come on, let's do it. Athena, stop. Come on. I have to yell at him. Hey. Athena, I, if you come in here one more time, we're going to have problems. If I tell you once and they tell you twice, the third time I'm going to fire her up. Yes. Mom, get the fuck out of my kitchen. Jake does not speak to his mother like a uh, mother 
should be spoken to. Day before we peeled two fucking buckets of potatoes, where did the buckets of potatoes go? Did we sell that many fucking potatoes? I don't think so. This restaurant came between us. I see my son and they say, this is not my son. He used to spoil me like to death. And now he hates me. Mom, get out of my line. The turmoil between Jake and Athena. You can get the hell out of here. It's just been bad vibes, and it's really affecting the restaurant. <laughs> the food quality is really low. They said their mosaic and orso was way too mushy. What? That was nasty. It was bad. Yeah. The morale is really low. We're up to the threshold of how much shit I can handle, period, bro. That Chef Ramsey's out, but El Greco's doomed. This fucking sucks. I put up everything, whatever I had, all of my money. This restaurant, if it doesn't work, I'm gonna be in the streets. I wish I was dead. The Greek restaurant in Austin, okay. How you doing? Good to see you. It's good to see you too. It's a pleasure. Gordon. Dustin. Dustin, good to see you, buddy. And you are? Uh, the waiter. OK, great. Are the others about? Yeah. Yeah? Can we Jake and Athena. Love oh, to yeah. meet them. Thank Jake. you. Jake. Athena. Hey. Oh. Hey. How you doing? Hey. Farewell, thank you. How are you? Jake, I'm doing good, sir. Thank you. Jake. Yeah, yes, yeah, sir. OK, great. Hey, can I give you a hug? A hug? What I was waiting for that. The OK, let's nice have a little hug. Oh, always, always nice. Welcome well, to my... Warm. Welcome, thank you. Well, nice to see you. And your name is? Athena. Athena. This is your... My mother. And you guys are partners, right? Yeah, yes. Good. Um, let's spend a couple of minutes catching up and give me a little insight to what's been happening. You got it. Shall we? Yeah. Things have gone bad with me and my mother since the restaurant has opened. My first priority is getting the restaurant fixed. And if that gets fixed, I think our relationship will get fixed. I am so mother and son. Yes, sir. Uh, who just wants? You are obviously the chef. And... Yes, yes, sir. And I'm just the mother and the cook back there with my sister. Oh, you cook as well? Yes. I try my best. I try to do it like my mother and my grandmother. So authentic. It's Great. authentic uh, ancestral recipes. How old were you first started cooking? I've been cooking all my life, but I, right. I, I went to culinary school about uh, eight years ago. My mom always wanted to open up a restaurant and get her sister down here from Greece. I said, you know what, let me go to culinary school and see what we could do. So that's, that's what I did. Are we, are we? Damn, are they all? I'm very good. Uh, are you great at catching flies? Yeah. Oh, yes, I am. What are you? I'm gonna no, kill no, come over here. I'm gonna kill a one. One second. No, no, maybe, no, maybe, no, maybe not in front of the customers. No, no, mom. No. There we go. There you okay. go. Uh, there you go. Well caught, by the way. That's uh, that's lightning. Yeah, that was lightning. Of course, huh? I'm good about Great the Great reflexes. Yeah. So let's go back to the beginning when you first opened. What was that like? It was beautiful. Great. The first eight months were great. We were busy all day long. There wouldn't be. Uh, a lull in service at all. Wow. But we was busy. We didn't even feel we was tired. What time do you start in the morning? We have to come here at 6 o'clock. We'd be here at Naturally. 6, yeah. But on average... Not my son. Don't say we be here yeah, because you are I not have, here. Yeah, I haven't you're been here in a while. Yeah. But you're the chef. Surely you're here at the same time. No, no, sir. So what yeah. time do you come in the morning? Probably 11, 11 o'clock. Right before lunch. 30. 12, yeah. Hold on a minute. Your mum comes <laughs> in at 6. And you come in at 11.30, five and a half hours later. Yes. So if your mum and your auntie does all the prep, what do you actually do? <sighs> yeah, I cook uh, food for customers, yeah. You cook for customers? Yeah, no, that's about it. You tired? He's always tired. He's always, always tired. tired. He's still yawning. What do you think the biggest problem with the restaurant is right now, today? I don't know what the reason is. It's Jake. It's Jake. Exactly. I see my son, how he used to be and how he's oh, now. Stop. Don't what? tell me you are not, because stop. you are. No, I'm not. My son changed. He doesn't care. Not about his life, not about the restaurant, not about anything. How much? What's the investment for the initial restaurant? How much did it cost? Uh, I came here with $300,000 plus another five. Eight, $800,000 for this? Almost, almost, yeah. $800,000. Everything's gone. Not only I'm losing all my money, I lost my son too. It's 
very dramatic. He doesn't want to hear my voice. No, no, because you're his nags. mother. He's nagging all the time. He says the constantly, he says I'm yelling at him. Even if I'm talking to him nicely, I can't take it anymore. The hell with the money, the hell with the rest of it. But losing my son, too, on top of everything. Shut up about that, please. Christ, man. I can't take it anymore. I'd rather be dead. I'd rather be dead to have a son like you now. Within minutes of arriving at El Greco, Gordon quickly realizes that the pressures of the restaurant has ruined the relationship between mother and son. I'd rather be dead to have a son like you now. After that gloomy greeting, he's hoping that the lunch is a little more cheerful. You want to go grab something to drink? Um, I'm just going to have a glass of water, please. Glass uh, of Dustin. Water? Um, and who's that uh, young man in the kitchen there? Who's that? That's Anthony. Anthony, may I have a quick word? Yeah, Anthony. Dustin, Dustin, thank you. Anthony, how are you? Good to see you. You're absolutely. Yeah. Sit down. Um, what's your position here? Um, uh, kitchen manager. Kitchen manager? I uh, run so the So we've got Jake, the executive staff. chef, and you're the kitchen manager? Yes. Wow, I haven't tasted the food yet, but I'm more shocked with the relationship with his mother. Is I that... No, this is that is mother the most son. shocking thing when anybody works here. Is it him or, or her? And it all starts with him not showing up in the morning. It's all. Unbelievable. She just doesn't like to be here. He'll come when he gets busy. How many hours a day is Jake here? Mm. On an average day, I'd say about three. Three total hours in one day. Yeah, yeah. Is he in love? Is he got a girlfriend? A video game. It's unbelievable. A video game. Yeah. He's not playing it right now, but I guarantee he's thinking about it. What a disaster. <sighs> okay. Well, thank you for the update. I yes, appreciate it. Yes, I wish I could meet you under better conditions. I really well, do. good Let's to see you. Let's get you some food, eh? Right? Thank you. Start off with stuffed zucchini, and then got to go for the lamb shank as well. I saw that, and then moussaka. Moussaka, please. Cool. Um, and I think that'll be it for now. Okay. Yeah. Definitely. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Bring it up, come on. Well, obviously things aren't going right since Chef Ramsey Ramsey and came out today, but I'm not going to let anyone defeat me. I got it. Right. Zucchini. Fucking do this. Jake likes to just get in and get out fast. He knows better, and I know better than to use the microwave and turn to Gordon Ramsay. Right now, Jake is very lazy. It's pretty messed up. Mm -hmm. Embarrassing, dude. Stuff zucchini is delightful. You're screwed. What is that? So, so stuff zucchini. Stuff zucchini. Yeah. Look at that. It's like two grenades about to explode. My God. Now it looks like something out of an alien movie. When zucchinis attack. Oh. Wow. That's badly seen. Bland. No go? No. I mean, that's disgusting. I could cry. What a joke. Wow. Sorry about that. What did they say? This stuff zucchini was horrible. Oh, fuck it. We're good. Hated it. What? Try this. If he hate it? It's too strong. That's good. Oh, yeah, that's good. Jake's ability at this moment is zero. He doesn't care anymore. Lamb Shank? It's coming, man. I'm doomed. Completely. Lamb Shank? Now, there's a very anemic-looking lamb shank. Look at the presentation. It's depressing. Almost like it's uh, been in the microwave for an hour. I'm sure that they wouldn't microwave a lamb shank. I'm a little bit nervous to have gray the meat is. That is way too salty and, and badly balanced. Dustin? I mean, so salty. Who cooked that, uh, Dustin? That's Chef Mike. Chef who? Chef Mike. It's a microwave. I thought there was a third chef. <laughs> he kind of is. He does Are a we... lot of work in the kitchen. Uh, we use Chef Mike a lot. Whenever there's lights on in this restaurant, Chef Mike's working. He's a dedicated employee. He uh, asked about Chef Mike. He, said, he asked who cooked it. I mean, I can't lie to him. So I told him. He's not happy. Holy fuck, dude. I can't take this bullshit. Hello. I am the 
Kiki. Kiki? Yeah. How are you? Nice Thank to see you. Nice and this good. May I finish my lunch first oh, and yeah, then have so a chat? English. No English? No. Okay, I'm sorry. Scottish? No. French? No. Spanish? No. Oh. German? Uh, German, a little okay. bit. Okay. I don't speak German, <laughs> but it's good to know. Thank you, thank you. This is the one I'm gonna serve? You can serve it to me, yeah. go. God, it's so embarrassing. I don't care, man, at this point. I don't give a fuck about anything, though. Moussaka. Now you think of Greece, you think of authenticity. That is not authentic. It's a non-moving moussaka. What a disaster. He went like this, stayed on there. Hey, Jacobs, I don't care. If you saw this food in a dog food bowl, you would not think twice. Moussaka? What was that made? When was that made? Yeah. I'm not sure, uh, you don't like it, the eggplant or no. anything? No. Uh, did Chef Mike have a hand in this one? Chef Mike has a hand in a lot of dishes. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. How'd you like to try anything else? No. <laughs> gotcha. It's just too painful. It's not possible for a restaurant to be so bad. Yes, about Chef Mike again with the moussaka. Well, where is, uh, where is everybody? This will be fun. I want to run away and hide. <laughs> hide. I'm putting out a high-end quality product, and if you don't appreciate it, then get the fuck out. I've never felt so depressed in my entire life. That was embarrassing. The stuffed zucchini? You didn't like it. No. Bland, depressing. The lamb shank, I mean, salty, sad. And then it was just dumped on a plate like a dog bowl. And then the masak. That was made this morning, was it? Yeah? Yesterday, it was made. What, what wasn't fresh about it? It was, it was What wasn't it fresh was yesterday. about it? You served me yesterday. The only chance of it tasting fresh has gone. It's not even 24 hours old. So well, what's not fresh about that? Executive chef. Chef Mike. The freaking microwave has more qualifications than you. I think your big problem is, Jake, you don't care. You don't want to even be here, do you? I can see it in the body language, the attitude, and just the way you perform. I've come across a lot of executive chefs in my time. I've never seen one quite like a sack of shit that's standing in front of me now. Ramsey told me how it is. I feel the same way. Could I just have a two minutes with the owner, please? Oh, with her? Yeah. 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 Damn. I'm really sorry. So it's another hope for us. Let's really try the tower. Yeah, I'm sorry. Listen, I need to be really honest with you. The hardest restaurants to fix ever are the ones where the passion has gone. And his passion nice has gone way before he thought about asking me here. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I'm going to be here. Tonight, I'm going to see how this place functions. I need to see everything as it is. I don't know how to do, Mr. Ramsey. You are my last hope for me and my son. Yeah, I just hope it's not too late. OK? <laughs> I'll see you later. OK. Thank you, Athena. Nightmare. I hope it's not too late. Uh... After a depressing afternoon with Jake and Athena. You all right? No, I'm not all right. It's going to be a long night. Word is spread that Chef Ramsay is at El Greco, and the restaurant is fully booked. How are you guys doing? Now Gordon hopes to get some more insight into how Greco operates in a dinner service. This is Diego. Diego. What's your role? Well, pretty much as great a line cook. Line cook? Yeah. yeah. Good. And what your training, what, what have you done? Well, I've been cooking in Austin in various different restaurants. So okay. I'm 18, I'm 32 now. Wow, so 14 years experience on yeah. the line. Wow. Let's go. Okay. I'll take the kebabs as well, except with shrimp. Here come the peas orzo for the second order. Get this out. We got green beans. There you go. Microwave food. Chef Mike. 12 gas ring burners there. 
and not one of the chefs is using them. They're all in the microwave. It's like we've forgotten there was a kitchen here. What is that in there? It looked like someone sat on a football. Okay. But it's uh, Moussaka it's from Moussaka. Chef Mike. You'd be fucked without the microwave, wouldn't you? Unbelievable, Diego. I would love nothing more than to see both of these on the nose. And it's really humiliating. I feel like a little kid heating stuff up in a microwave. It kind of messes with my passion for cooking. Like, I don't feel like a cook the way we're doing things with the microwave. As Chef Ramsay watches plate after plate after plate being zapped in the microwave, it becomes clear that Jake doesn't really care about his food. Here we go again, waiting in line from Chef Mike. We got a cue for the microwave. This is incredible. The minute you walk into a restaurant with an open kitchen and all the chefs are facing out, as opposed to standing in front of the stove, get out. That's what's happening here. Unbelievable. Dustin. Is this normal, this? I have nothing to say. That's just how we do it. I've seen a diaper look more appetizing than that. Yeah, I agree. Greek restaurants. More like a Greek tragedy. Pisses me off. What I think about my food is, it's healthy, it's fresh, it's, it's good, it's damn good. Yeah, reheated, microwave food. It's, it's not microwave food. I mean, how else am I going to reheat it? Don't break my balls about getting it re reheating it in the microwave. He's been cooking 14 years. There's a whole stove there, not even being used, and this guy's like this. Come on, Jake. Fuck me. I don't use the word microwave. I'm not cooking it in the microwave. I'm reheating it in the microwave. Big difference. There's a big difference. I don't think it compromises the food, reheating it that way, but I mean. Say that again. You don't think it compromises the food? I don't think so. Oh, my god. Oh, they're going to have a big pie. Oh, my god. It doesn't compromise the standard of food? No. Wow. Yeah, you fuck off. How's that? There we go. Go. Get out of my line. Jake. Yeah, Jake. I got it. Look, Jake. I'm trying to yeah. put Jake. out food. I'm Jake. not here to talk something. to you. Take your head out your ass and just start acting like a man and start taking responsibility for something, will you? Hey, I'm taking responsibility. You are. And you think it's smart telling me to fuck, fuck I don't want to fuck around. So, how about showing a little bit of respect for what you're doing? Go. Get my line. Let me do my job. Get out of here. Jake, Jake, I'll go with pleasure. It's an hour and a half into dinner service at El Greco. Reheated, microwave food. And while Chef Ramsay has had enough with the microwave. Yeah, you fuck off, how's that? There we go. Jake has had enough of Chef Ramsay. Go, get out of my line. You think it's smart telling me to fuck, fuck off? I don't want to fuck around. So Whatever. how about showing a little bit of respect for what you're doing? Go, get my line, let me do my job. I'll go, with pleasure. Wow. Wow, yeah, I need table 20. I know it's a mess. A mess? You can fix it. You can tell them whatever we have to do, and we will do it. I've never seen a kitchen function with a microwave as much as here. OK. All right. That's number one. Number two. Your son doesn't care. It's depressing. There's three chefs standing on the line, and not one person's cooking. OK. If you have passion, and love for food. You don't zap it, you don't microwave it. I'm really sorry. I'm sorry. Greek restaurant, nuclear power station. He's right, Mr. Ramsey. My son change. He doesn't even care about himself. Makes me feel bad. Honestly, seriously, I'm in shock. Let me tell you why. The busiest chef tonight is Chef Mike. And how dare you tell me that food cooked in the microwave... It's not cooked in the microwave. It's reheated. Are you honestly saying there's no difference in food that's been reheated than cooking something fresh? I mean, I don't think it tastes that much different. There's no love, no care, no passion. She doesn't care. Oh, Athena, please. She has to care. Athena. You have to take in charge. Hey, and quiet. you are not. Quiet. Quiet, OK? Get out of my fucking restaurant. Right now, out. It's not your restaurant. Yeah, it is my restaurant. Out. I'm not going to listen to your bullshit, OK? I wouldn't be alive right now if I talked to my mother the way Jake does. My mom would murder me. 
Yeah. Athena, yeah. you know what? I'm sick and tired of nag, 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 nag every goddamn day. Oh, you need, leave you need me to... alone. Oh, yeah, leave you alone. I need to go and have a fucking good thing. I got to. I'll see you in the morning. Good night. Good night. My son gave up. Jack should be more committed to this restaurant. You have to change, James. I hope my son comes to his senses. And Chef Ramsey will bring the old Jake back. I can give my life for that. Come and prep. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be here at 10 o'clock. As another day begins, Athena and her sister Kiki arrive early to begin the daily ritual of prepping for lunch and dinner. But in spite of promising to be there at 10 o'clock, Jake is nowhere to be seen. The bank, Manu Bayo, is in my name. He's blowing it for me. Saradena chrononanthropos. They tell you 10 o'clock, be 10 o'clock here. I don't want to hear your bullshit or her bullshit. That's why I don't come down here. This is exactly why I don't come down, because they yell at me, they gang up on me. Yeah, yeah, OK, OK, You are, you are. There's nothing left of me in here. I'm sick of it. Oh, I think Vicky is not anymore a human. I don't know what he is. After spending the morning doing research around Austin, Gordon is ready to put some changes into effect. Morning. Morning. But the real question is, is Jake ready to change his attitude? Morning. Morning. How are you? I'm OK. Yeah? You don't look OK. What's going on? I just had an argument with my son. This is what happens every day. If he tells me he's going to come at 10 o'clock, he comes 12 o'clock. This is crazy. Don't you like it? What did she say? Excuse me? I, I don't understand. This is ridiculous. Get in here, please. Two minutes. Yes, sir. The atmosphere in here is horrific. What's going on? I don't want to be in here with these two. I really don't. Every time I walk in here, they look for something to complain at me. And then they both gang up on me. And I don't need you two fucking me coming in here and you guys yapping and yapping and yapping. I don't want to hear that shit in the morning. I really don't. No. No. Yeah, whatever. Why is she so upset? What was that? Please? They say I don't come down on time. No, you and never I do. I don't. You never do. This is the reason. No. All, no, you, all you do is yell and you mad. You're creating Athena. that. No, I don't create it. Athena, yes. who the hell wants to come down early in the morning and listen to people yelling at him? I don't know what else I'm going to do. I'm up to here with the, I get very upset. That's what I got to put up with every morning. He doesn't give a damn he must about a damn. mine. Come on, it can't be that cold hearted. Yeah. He I, is I, I, sometimes I don't. I mean, I don't want to deal with it, dude. He I mean, if you put up with this shit for two years, you're not going to give a damn about it either. You won't. They're not your friends, it's your mum and your aunt. Yeah. He doesn't give a and damn then, about that. No, That's but why, we why should I give a damn when you're swearing at me, you're cursing yeah, me, you're calling me names all day long? Nebromniari. 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 He's upset. Yeah. This is what I got put up with every fucking morning. Every morning. You know what? You don't need to be here. You and her do not need to be here. I don't need this fucking stress. Who do drip is right there? Tikani says you're the messer. Tikani said the messer, Tik said it's the messer. Tikano the messer, I put this man like you, she's a thing, a finish. Yeah. Ego mono ya to creo scat, ya fina. Me creo doy. Posso creare il mano se lo messa. Excuse me, Kiki, please. Es vita parigiles, mos hari, foti. Oh, please. And I have this. 
41 χρόνο και θα τα είσαι η μάνα σου. Ναι. Δεν τρέπεσε. Κοίτα σε παρακαλώ. Σκασμό και εσύ. Τον έχει πάρα χαϊδέψει τον έχει κάνει γαϊδού. Άγγελε. Αυτό δεν φοβάσαι να τον μιλά. Το τον έχει κάνει γάιδαρο. Yeah. Από εδώ μέσα μόνο θα φύγει αυτό το ήρωα στο μαγαζί. You know, I'd be better off with both of you staying home and let me do what I need to fucking do. Then do it. I will. Don't fucking come to work. You and her leave. After years of pain and suffering at El Greco, the family has finally reached its breaking point. Don't fucking come to work! You and her leave. Don't come. But is that what you really want? Is that what you did? No, I don't really want that. No. What the fuck are we doing? We didn't do this in the beginning. All this argument has brought our restaurant down and brought our relationship to a halt. This fighting has got to stop. Yes. This is insane. He has to commit to getting in here earlier, and you have to stop beating him with a stick. What do you want me to do? Wipe the board clean. Are you willing to change? I am willing to change the lake. It's got to stop today. Stop right now. I'll start all over again like it's the first day. And that is a commitment that all Bravo. three of you. Αυτό ήθελα να ακούσω. Αυτό ήθελα να ακούσω. Το κάνεις εσύ, τελείωσε. Η ψυχή μου είσαι, το καταλαβαίνεις παρά σε τα παιδιά μου είχες τότε. Κανένας δεν είδεσαι τίποτα, ούτε στο μυαλό ούτε στη δύναμη. Κανένας δεν είδεσαι τίποτα. If my son can change, I think I'm going to be the most happiest mother in this world. We've forgotten the importance and the advantage of having a family-run restaurant because when it works brilliantly, it's amazing. And we have to get back. And it's not going to get any better unless you change, all three of you. Okay. I got my mom and aunt back. I really love both of them. You know what I'm saying? I don't like arguing with them. I love my aunt like she is my mom. Now that the family has made a commitment to work together, as opposed to fighting each other. Right, I just need all of you for two minutes outside, please. Chef Ramsay has made a commitment of his own that he hopes will have a major impact on the dining experience at El Greco. They're gonna run us over. Yeah, a car, bam! It's a firing squad. <laughs> I had fixed the problem in the restaurant. I'd ran over everybody. Chef Mike, you've been so busy. It's time that you took a little vacation. What's going on? I don't know. Hey guys, I've got something to uh, to show you. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, oh, the microwave! <laughs> it's time to say goodbye oh, to a very busy Chef Mike. Chef Mike, hey, guys, back! <laughs> yes, ready, <laughs> Chef Mike. Yeah. Chef Mike, it was good knowing you, but we're better off without you. Chef Mike, nice shot. Yeah. Has left the building. Has uh, left the building. Yeah. A beginning of a new era. Yes, sir. Because we are relaunching this restaurant tomorrow. And you do not need a microwave to cook in your restaurant. You know, it's a family business. By losing my passion, I've hurt the restaurant, I hurt my employees, I hurt my customers, and I need to get back the basics and cook food the way it needs to be cooked and that's what I'm gonna do. With a microwave no longer the essential piece of equipment in the kitchen, Chef Ramsay begins to put his plan into effect, cooking fresh Greek food. We're gonna do a grilled salmon, nicely seasoned, mm -hmm. salt pepper, okay, extra touch of salt on the skin. And getting Jake passionate about cooking again. Nicely marked all the way around, literally 90 seconds on each side. You got it, I'm not in here to pre-cooked food. I'm here to cook it. That's why I went to school. That's why I'm in here. We'll take a spoon of tzatziki just on the plate. The salmon that sits on there. That's beautiful. Jake's passion, I think, is coming back for cooking. I think I'm going to have my son back. Now, start tasting. Yeah, it tastes really good. Wonderful. I'm excited for Jake and Athena. I feel a huge weight has been lifted here. I feel like uh, I can actually be a chef now. Thank you, sir. Let's go. Woohoo!
Now that the family at El Greco is focused on moving ahead instead of looking behind, Chef Ramsay's renovation team works through the night to give El Greco its own unique identity. Good morning. Are you ready to We're see ready. the new restaurant? Yes, I'm ready. I want to go in. I want to see it. Right, let's go. All right. Ladies no. first. Oh, oh wow. 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 That's great. Yeah, yeah it's nice. Very light. Yeah. It is beautiful. Yes. When you walk through these doors, you think of Greece. That is awesome. The restaurant was soulless. It was dull, it was drab, no identity. Now when you walk in, it's clean, it's Mediterranean. I it's love it. Keeping with the classic Greek flag with the blue and white, chairs, blue and white, the silhouettes on the walls, beautiful. Yeah, yeah, this is awesome. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I, I notice something different every time I look. And you have a centralized table here. And look at it, it's got the right height, we've got new stools, brushed stainless steel. Oh, wow. wow oh, perfect. beautiful. I love it. This is, this nice. is perfect, the picture. Everything's perfect. Words can't describe how I feel about the restaurant. This is like a new place. It's a new beginning, a fresh start. That's, that's what we want. It's awesome. With the excitement of the new dining room still in the air, Chef Ramsay's carefully designed menu is ready to be revealed. Welcome to the most amazing, vibrant Greek menu here in Austin, Texas. And guess what? Chef Mike didn't touch a thing. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't touch a thing. We're going to start off with the lamb chop. Lightly seasoned, lightly marinated, and grilled to perfection. Half a roasted chicken. Amazing. Grilled octopus, braised slowly, and served with a little Greek marinade. And that's very classic. Additional entrees, pressed eggplant moussaka, yeah, and the beef moussaka running alongside it. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah. OK, get some knife and forks, dig in. Yeah? Grab me one of these. <laughs> very nice. Mm, dude, that's killer. Amazing. Oh. That was phenomenal, too. My dream came true. This is a new start for us, for me and my son and my sister. It's a new beginning. Hello. Welcome to El Greco. What can I start you off with? It's relaunch night at El Greco. Let me get the deep brisaka. Deep brisaka? It's all going to feel really weird and awkward, but of course it's going to feel weird because we're laying down the foundation again. And for the first time in a long time, everything will be cooked fresh to order. There we go. We got a crispy feta and we got a grilled octopus. Let's do this, dude. It feels awesome to finally be able to cook again. I want to hit the road running. Drop the feta, please. I'm ready to go. Drop the feta, please. I got oh, it. Feta going. I got it. I should be doing it. I should be saying I'm dropping the feta. Go ahead. Come on, finish. As stunning fresh food makes its way out to the diners, it is fantastic. the demand on the kitchen continues to grow. Drop a falafel, OK? I'll get that. But just as importantly, so does Jake's enthusiasm. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Jake, Jake, you can't do everything. Yes, sir. I am now plating the veggie. Falafel. Where, hey, where are these in the oven? Falafel. First thing. These are the falafels? Yeah. I got it. Jake. Yes, sir. Jake. Yes, sir. Talk to us. Come on. Talk to us. OK. There you I go. I need you to uh, start getting these two tickets out right here. Call them out for me. OK. Walking no, in. No, 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 no. That's a bad idea. Let me put these up. <sighs> Unbelievable. When I first arrived here, Jake was just a lazy chef and doing nothing. Now, he's the other extreme. He's doing everything and delegating nothing, which is just as dangerous. Unbelievable. <laughs> Hey, what's this lamb doing here, man? We selling this? With Jake unwilling to accept help from anyone, the kitchen is completely stalled, and a relaunch that started off so well is now in jeopardy. What else can I be doing? <sighs> Jake, can you answer me? What? What are you doing, man? You I don't listen to shit. Because I don't got nothing for you to do yet. Jake's got to be able to either work with us better or the whole thing will go down. Don't give me attitude, Diego, please. We have a chance starting today to do things completely different and we should work together. God damn you people, man. Yeah, yeah. Can't be fucking nobody hey, else. Hey, dude, one more fucking lip from you, you're done. Both of you. I think my son is full up. Come on, Jake. Or it's going to fall apart. Listen to what I'm telling you. Oh, God. It's relaunch night at El Greco. I got it. I got it. 
and with Jake trying to run the entire kitchen solo. What are you doing, man? You don't listen to kitchen I say. Because I don't got nothing for you to do yet. Dinner service is on the verge of disaster. God damn you people, man. Well, yeah. Can't be fucking nobody Ridiculous. else. Ridiculous. Hey, dude, one more fucking lip from you, you're done. Both of you. This is ridiculous. Well, okay, wait, two wait, seconds. Wait, 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 wait. Anthony, Anthony, come here. Diego, Jake. Yes, sir. Two seconds. You have got to start delegating. We're about to go down. Stop running around and delegate these two. You got it. I'm, I'm Stay flustered. as a team, guys. Don't start fucking arguing. There was a lot of mistakes that shouldn't be happening at this point. Chef Ramsay is totally right. I need to delegate more. So this is it's going to stop. Green beans, green beans, we got them, right? Right here, chef. I need an orzo, a bean, and a pilaf ready. Right here, chef. Good. Right. With Jake finally working in tandem with his team in the kitchen. This is going to 28. Thank God. Stunning, delicious Greek dishes are once again leaving the kitchen. Gorgeous, huh? That is some intense mufasa. Everybody had smiles on their face. Everybody in the dining room. Happy? Oh, great. The tickets took a little bit of time, but they love the food. Eat. Oh, leave. Make me a steak plate, please. That's it. That's all I want. That's it. That's all you got. I'm happy with the results of what we were pushing out tonight. We made a few mistakes, but we made good food. And it actually felt good to smell the smells and hear the sounds and actually really be cooking. Uh, that's it. I don't, we have another thing. We don't have any more tickets. They're done. They're done. The ticket is done. Take care. Thank you. Thanks for being patient. Oof. OK, in a matter of days, we've come a very, very long way, let me tell you that. And the atmosphere in here tonight, in comparison to when I first walked through those doors, the difference is night and day. Very good, guys. Well done, you. Ramsey, he's the man. And no one else could have done it but him. Jake's a hard cookie to crack. He, he bashed it. It was a major, and I mean major, transformation. I think we've been given um, kind of a golden ticket to either bring this restaurant to the brink of greatness or to flush it down the toilet. And it's totally up to Jake and Athena at this point. Here's to El Greco. Let's go! Well done. Breaking the plates is like breaking the old habits. We can wipe this clean. New start, new beginning. Jake. You were under pressure tonight. If I can give you one piece of advice, you need to show respect to your team. Yes, sir. You're their leader. Yes, You're sir. their inspiration. I was very proud of him. It's a good feeling, man. I'm so happy it's... about that. Not a lot of people get second chances. Yeah, we're definitely not going to squander it. We're going to move forward and make something of it. Athena, you need to respect him, and he needs to respect you. Exactly. Give me a hug. Oh, that is a big wet smudgy one. Chef, it was a pleasure. Thank you. Look after yourself. Yes, sir. And look after your team. Yes, sir. Team first. Good night. Good night. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. For nearly two years, this restaurant was microwaving everything. So the fact that we had a successful relaunch is amazing. But the biggest, and I mean the biggest miracle of all, is the fact that we brought Athena and Jake together. And quite honestly, I didn't think that was going to happen. Wow. Chef Mike, rest in pieces. In the months that followed, Welcome to El Greco. Let's do this. El Greco received positive feedback from the community. This is fantastic. This has a really good flavor. And it appeared as though the restaurant was going to be turned around. But Jake and Athena's insurmountable debt was too much to overcome. And the mother and son were forced to close El Greco. Inman Park, Georgia, an upscale Atlanta suburb known for its trendy dining scene. In the middle of this tight-knit community is Park's Edge, opened three years ago by longtime friends Richard and Jorge. All right, Jorge. Jorge is my best friend. Our friendship started when I used to own an air freight company in California. And for the last three years, we've been business partners. OK, where's Richard? OK, there you go. I was looking for you. When I was working for Richard, I decided that I was going to go to culinary school. And after I graduated from culinary school, and Richard and I decided to open up this restaurant. Hey, guys, our first guest is coming in. Let's look alive. 
Prior to owning Park's Edge, I had zero restaurant experience. Yeah, you can help me a little bit? I just had a dream. Basically, they had a couple dollars in their pocket, and they're like, hey, let's open up a restaurant. OK, you got the fire zone, everything's on. Do you know how to do it? No, do you? No, well, hey, how hard can it be? Well, I have a refire on 10. I don't have a refire on 10. Hey, one at a time. The kitchen is a mess. What is that, eh? I don't have that, man. There's no organization and structure. How long you got on the scallops on 21, chef? They're, they're, my times are all fucked up over here. I don't think Jorge knows what he's doing. When's this guy going to realize his food's just not working and that he needs to do something else? My cooking is something that's a little more evolved and different. Hey, try it. I like to just kind of take stuff that's basic and just sort of reinvent it. Yeah, you can't say that. Okay. Damn. Wow, this is weird. I wouldn't get it again. Did not like the taste. They said it wasn't good. Jorge definitely thinks his food is like Olympic quality food. It's perfect. It's like having a friend that just thinks they're completely kick ass at something and they're not that good at it. He could either order seafood, but I would not pick another steak for him. All right, how are your tables doing, Drew? 45. The order's been in for an hour. They got that little girl looking like she's about to die. Hi, hi, hi. When the heat is on in the kitchen. I've never worked this hard before. <laughs> Richard serves no purpose. How's it going? Not good. I know. He doesn't know anything about the restaurant to help. My job is to run the front of the house, OK? And that's the easy part. Oh, my god. I didn't even see you, Cass. How you doing, baby? I just dress up and smile. <laughs> that's all I do. Voila. <laughs> <laughs> He always has a smile on his face. <laughs> like nothing is going wrong. He kind of has this. But there's some deep seated issues with the restaurant and the community. We put a tent up in the parking lot. I didn't know he needed a permit. And then we were pouring liquor without a license. A newscaster came into the restaurant and he told me that the neighbors don't like us being here. They could do better and deserve better. And my response was, they don't like us because we're a black owned restaurant and we're in a white neighborhood. Since Rich called the neighborhood raises, we lost most of the business. What's going on out there? Uh, you don't want to know, man. It was so bad, I, I, didn't, I couldn't even walk the floor. I don't have a plan B for this. This is my life. To be a successful restaurant, you need the neighborhood on your side. Now, I did a little research on Park Says before I got here, and what I found was somewhat shocking. They've only been open for three years, and they've managed already to totally alienate the whole neighborhood. Hello. Hey, good afternoon. How are you doing, Chef Ramsey? I'm Richard, co-owner of the restaurant. Co-owner of the restaurant? Look at you, looking very dapper. We need Chef Ramsey's help because Jorge and I have built up a ill relationship, which is warranted with the community, and I don't know how to fix it at this point. Um, who's at the foundation? Corey and I. OK, great. It's 50 50. I usually get managed in front of the house. He runs the back of the house. OK, and is that there now? Yeah. Want to go take a look? Yeah. Well, why okay. don't you bring him out? OK, hold on a sec. Corey, can you step away right now or no? I mean, I got a second. OK. As far as the food and the menu is concerned, there's really nothing wrong with it. OK, so, Gordon Ramsay. Good to see you. As far as the community is concerned, I think we could definitely use some, some help. Give me a little insight to the business so okay. I can get my head up to speed. In your eyes, what's the issue? It's in a nutshell. Uh, you know, we're just trying to reach back to the neighborhood. Yeah, we oh, yeah. made some mistakes in this neighborhood that uh, we don't know how to unwind. I did you read know. something about that. And we're hoping you can help us with that a little bit. So the good news is it's not the food. No, right? no, no, no. Well, it's no. great. Well, I can't wait to eat. All right. All right. Let's Very go. Good. Okay, follow me back this way. OK, what you got? Here we go, Chef. Thank you. Uh, Amy's gonna be taking care of you. You should be right over, right? Thank you. Uh huh. First by seared scallops, avocado egg rolls, crispy shared wontons. Wow. Mexican, Asian, Indian. It sounds like a fusion confusion. How are you? Hi. How are you? Nice to see you. My name is Amy. Amy, nice to see you. Nice to meet you. Likewise, I love that smile. Thank you. What's the style of food here? What is it? Is it classic American? Or... No, I think it's a classic Mexican. With an American, American twist. American twist. Or a twisted chef. Or a twist. <laughs> is there a misprint on there, or is that me? Grilled Caesar salad? No. Really? The lettuce is grilled. Uh huh. Chop it on the grill. 
never heard of that? No, it hasn't oh. hit London yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll start off with that. The grilled Caesar, no chicken, just... Uh, just... Do you know what? Throw the chicken in there, why not? Throw the chicken yeah. in there? I'll go for the... Um, um, uh, hello. Hi, how are you? Before you steal my knife and fork, we say hello. Oh, yeah. My yes. name is Kevin. Kevin, good to see you, bud. Yes. Can I help you? Yeah, we're thrilled to have you here. I hope you can make some sense out of this shit. Yeah. Kevin! I need you. Can you excuse me for a second? Please. Some... You're, you're busy. <laughs> yeah. Damn. I thought it was a thief. Yeah, that was random. Uh, I, I don't very know. random. Yeah, I don't know what he was. Excellent. What does Kevin do? He's a bartender. He's a bartender? Yeah, so he really shouldn't even be over here right now. So I, I don't even know. A bartender that just pops up and clears tables. I don't know tables. what he's doing. Multitasking. <laughs> OK, where were we? I'll go for the flash fried oysters. Um, I'll go for the grilled salmon. And as it's ready, just send it. Thank you, though. You're welcome. Coming in, chef. I'm ringing in his orders, OK? OK. So be prepared. To me, it's Chef Ranzer's just another customer. I mean, as long as he likes my food, we're gonna get along just fine. Good to go? Walking out. Yeah, I think he's gonna love the salad. I mean, it's a grilled lettuce. I mean, can't go wrong. Grilled salad. Come on. It is grilled. You're still amazed. I'm shocked. I've never thought about it, but it's true. Like, wait, why are we grilling lettuce? Sorry for interrupting, just two seconds. But this is a first for me, a grilled Caesar salad. <laughs> Dinner, but they actually grilled the lettuce. <laughs> um, can you just show a hand if anyone else has ever had a grilled Caesar salad before? Anybody here, ladies? No? Mm. Sorry for interrupting. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, geez. Oh. I always get nervous when a chef serves me the butt of the lettuce. When you've got the butt of the lettuce on, you can never clean the lettuce properly. And unfortunately, it's not very nice inside. Dry chicken. The salad looks hideous. Why oh, is it so spicy? Take it away. Everything is spicy, everything. Jesus. Thanks, Danny. Grilled Caesar salad. Coming in, chef. Chicken is dry. The butt of the lettuce never should be at the end of the lettuce. Okay. And why does salad have to be spicy? We're in Mexican-American cuisine. Well, he's clearly not from Mexico, so. First of all, Caesar salad is not from Europe. It's from Mexico. I mean, I'm the Mexican here. You're not. It's supposed to be spicy. Oysters? Oh, the flash fried. Yes. Thanks, darling. Are you kidding me? That's an oyster. <laughs> Honestly, it looks like a fossil from Jurassic Park. <laughs> wow, that is disgusting. Can you get me Richard, please? Sorry. Yes, sir. Sit down. OK. When was the last time you sat down and actually ate off your I menu? Ha I have not sampled the entire menu right. like on a regular basis. Wow. Yeah. I want you to close your eyes now, okay. please. All right. OK? And just try and identify that. Tell me what you taste there. There's a lot of bread. A lot of bread. A little heat. Mm. Here we go again. Yeah. <laughs> Something. Oh, you're right? Yeah. Okay. <coughs> yeah. Please, here you yeah. go. Please. Okay, thank you. Oh, shit. <laughs> Rich needs water. It's about time for, you know, Rich to actually taste the food and see what's going on. Don't choke now. Yeah, it was, it was the spice that got me at the end. Yeah, the spice that got you. <laughs> it's the bread that got me. <laughs> I'll give you that. No good on the oysters? Uh, yeah, not good. Next up is salmon. Salmon. Let's live in hope. What happened? Everything is just way too spicy. Ay, ay, ay. Chef Jorge thought that he was going to impress uh, Chef Ramsay with his food, and he wasn't impressed. I hope that this is definitely like an eye opener for him. So your plate is really hot. Don't worry, babe. Thank you, babe. OK. That looks like the bottom of a fucking bird cage. OK. I mean, salmon served on a bed of sticky rice with a green curry beurre blanc. What the fuck is going on in there? It's like the United Nations of main courses there. What's the style? It's a, it's, I guess it's a little convoluted, isn't it? That's one way of putting it. Yeah. OK. I want you to taste this. Go for the ragu and the strawberries. I mean, just the combination. The rice is just mm -hmm. hideous. Yeah. The spice is ridiculous. And the strawberries and the red onion ragu. Yeah. 
I had no idea we had that many problems with the food. The chef Ramsey dissected it. We got a lot of work to do here, don't we? That's the end of the segment of the year. Yeah. Don't worry. Got some more input for you. Okay. He says you got a little board with green curry beurre blanc, the strawberry ragu, and the sticky rice. You try it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And when you try the three together, it is a little, um, it doesn't blend well. You take it through the kitchen? Yeah. That way. Where's the chef? Here. Right here. Oh, okay, okay good. We should come in for two minutes. Okay. Uh, when I arrived, you said the problem with the restaurant is the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And the issue wasn't the food. Yes, sir. Seriously? Now, I cannot believe that you stand there and tell yourself that your food is edible. Whose ever idea it was to grill a Caesar salad was just hideous. And the same thing one was grilling a salad. The salad wasn't even clean. They had a butter lettuce on there. But forget the grilled Caesar salad. The biggest insult, the salmon. You're all over the place. There's no thought process. What restaurant did you train in? I went to school. What do you mean you went to school? Where did you go out and train before you opened your own restaurant? Oh, I didn't. I didn't. You didn't train? Yeah, not at all. Out of culinary school, you then went and owned your own restaurant? That is great. Really? Here's it in a nutshell. You're not qualified to stand behind the line, let alone run your own fucking business. All you're doing is you're coming in here, trashing my background as far as where I've been, saying that all the food you ate today was shit, OK? One man's opinion is not an issue. You've got the arrogance to stand there and tell me that you think you're right. OK. You're gone. Listen, before you came here, all the things were working. Working in your little mind or working in your mind? I knew, I knew, I knew they needed to be tweaked. Tweaked? Yeah. Fucking brain surgery. This guy's just out of control. He doesn't have any fucking right to come in here and just fucking talk to me in that sort of manner. Get the fuck out of here. This is my restaurant. Show me some fucking respect. I gotta go. After an informative lunch, Chef Ramsay has a better understanding of the food problems at Park's Edge. Um, uh, let's catch up. Have a seat. He now wants to delve deeper into the issues that this restaurant has with its local community. I'd like to sort of understand what happened here for the neighborhood. Uh, number one was we erected a tent in our parking lot without a proper permit. So we get cited. First, the neighbors came by and said, hey, you got to take the tent down. It's not legal. Did you take it down? We did in accordance to the city, but not in accordance to the neighbors. Damn. So that pissed yeah. off the locals next. Right. So then we didn't have a liquor license and a business license. And I'm not gonna lie, we were we were getting, we were negligent. Wow. I mean that's quite major. No liquor license. Yeah. Holy fuck. Yeah. Really? Yeah. So then, first the neighbors came out and said the neighborhood could do better. Uh, we were not good enough for the neighborhood. And my response was they don't like us because we're a minority-owned restaurant in a white neighborhood. Wow. Yeah. So you said the neighborhood was racist. Yes, exactly. Have you done anything, you personally, in the last three years to sort of build those bridges with the neighborhood? I don't know what to do or what to say or how to reach out properly. We made some stupid mistakes. Even the statement I made was, was stupid, and I don't know how to fix it at this point. I don't know if I think it might even be beyond repair. OK, I'll be back later, yeah? I want to observe how you run your business. All right? Thank you. All right, thank you. Okay, ladies, uh, we're gonna get set really, really quick. We got 78 people in an hour and a half. With a busy night ahead of them. Matt, you need this pasta transfer? No, I'm good. Richard and Jorge prepare their teams for dinner service. I'm back, out back for one second. Oh, there you go, set, huh? You okay? Ready? Yeah. You're going outside with a cigarette in your hand. <laughs> yes. Customer's about to come in, and you're going outside I'm for a cigarette. Going, no. Uh, no. It's very embarrassing. I'm not gonna lie. It was like a, a parent punishing a child. Okay. Fuck off in there. Come on, let's All go. Right, here we go. Paul, hey, I just want you to do what you normally do. Okay. So do whatever you need to do. All right, man. Thank you. Chef Ramsay thinks that I don't know what I'm doing, but I know what the fuck I'm doing. And this is a time for me to show Chef Ramsay what Park Sage is all about. So who does what? I do a grill, pantry, uh, chef's gonna work saute, and Matt, I believe, is in between, helping us out. And how much experience do you have? More than 10 years. More than 10 years? Yeah. Okay, good. So, uh, how many years experience do you have? Uh, 15. 15? Wow. Hi, ladies, how 
are we? Hi, my name is Drew. I'll be your server. We'll chug up the water. Water in. The dinner service underway. This is the Midwell Carlo right here. Hi, Drew. We're going to be extremely hot. Chef Ramsay is eager to see how Jorge leads his team in the kitchen. Hey, Ebony, talk to me. Where are you at right now? Table 12 is working. No, it's not working yet. I don't think it's Jesse. OK, 42 needs to go out. Chef, are you ready on 42? What's up, 42? Wow. Hold on, 10. Wait, wait. Jorge well, doesn't know what he's doing. Matt, Jesse, what are you guys working on right now? We need to have scallops on 36. I'm, I'm not ready on the scallop. What scallop are you? We're doing 36 right now. Unbelievable. It's crazy that someone thinks that they can come out of culinary school and run a restaurant when you don't have any experience. Is Jorge oh, running the kitchen, or do they just don't do what they want? No, he's running the kitchen. He is. He's a little overwhelmed right now. He's overwhelmed? I think mean, I mean, he might be. Oh my How is everything? Oh, I mean, it's really spicy. It's wrong in the middle. Let me see the inside girls. Oh, wow. OK, let me take that back. We're going to work on that. Chef? What is the issue? Uh, it's dry. Yeah, I can't do anything about it. OK. Unfucking real. What's wrong with that one, darling? It's cold. Oh, no. It's medium rare. It's cold centered. Medium rare is going to be cold centered. I don't know what the problem is. It's so frustrating. I'm a good server, like, and you're just making me look bad. And that's my money, like, that's my tip. So now it's like you're messing with my money now. What's wrong with that? Yeah. Oh, wow. It's raw. I mean, you can't serve that to customers. What is that? That's raw. You cannot serve it like that. Chef Jorge thinks that his food is to perfection. Like, he should be cooking for President Obama. All right. You OK? Yeah. But I thought you. Owned the place, ran the place. I did. I'm just struggling to see a head chef right now. Yes, well, I've been... But the stuff that's coming back is stuff that's either gone overcooked or undercooked. Yeah, that's you right. You need to wake up a little bit. Anyhow. Jesus. With Chef Jorge losing complete control of his kitchen... How are we going? 20 B. It's going to be eight minutes. What? The servers are frustrated. Table 20 A? Really needed. Not surprisingly, they aren't the only ones. <laughs> I'm doing all I can at this point. It's our first time. Probably be our last. Uh, is there any way you can go to the table and do what you can do? Where do I go? Where do I go beyond that? Richard does not like to deal with the complaints. I feel like we, as servers, are running this restaurant. I need Rich. Don't we all? Richard, can I? Be, you got two seconds? Yes, sir. Yeah. Quickly, please. What's happening? Mm -hmm. What's your role? As far as table times and so forth? No, just in general. Well, we're right now we're in the weeds. I'm, le I'm, letting, I'm letting him do his but, thing. But you're not doing anything. We're not doing anything. You just stand around and sort of glide. Well, right now we're overwhelmed. The, the house is full. Oh, come on, Richard. Come on. I don't, I, I don't even know where to begin with the tables. I don't even know where to begin. Oh, yeah. come on, Richard. Doing dinner service, I don't know what to do differently. I'm at a loss. I mean, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm at a loss. Yeah, I hear you. So I personally don't get involved. OK, here's your crab cake right here. Can I get some runners, please? Yes, I'm here to run. Yeah, I'm here to run. Run, run away. <sighs> this is a joke. I've never seen two owners that are more clueless at running a place than these two idiots, I'm telling you. Richard just walks around, and it's almost like he's in a dream. And Jorge, the self-appointed executive chef, that guy hasn't got a clue. Thank God the locals boycotted this place, because if they ate here, they'd never come back. Park Edge? Yeah, on the edge of a fucking disaster. What a nightmare. Excuse me. Can we have another chance on order? We have another engagement that we need to make. Okay. The entire table. Yes. With disgruntled diners unwilling to wait any longer. All right, folks, have a good night. Oh, they are not happy. The dining room empties out quickly. That's a wrap, Jorge. But while the kitchen may be done for the night, start wrapping things up, man. Chef Ramsay's inspection of the walk-in is just beginning. Look at the state of this. What a mess. Asparagus here, rubbery. Oh, come on. That's got to be a month old. What the fuck is that in there? Oh, shit. Jesus. I've no idea. Is that? Oh, it's chicken. Marinating chicken. Jeez. It's marinating, all right? More like fermenting. What a joke. Hoi, can I uh, can I just have a, a word with you in private with Richard? Yeah, on our yeah. own. When was the last time you looked in here? Probably 
Come on, straight answers. Just one of you give me a thing. Wednesday. Wednesday. Look what's in the box. Who turns? The project's over. Who rotates the freshness? That's my staff. Really? Fuck me. Seriously? Why are you throwing my lemons like that for? Why are you taking my product They're and you're molding doing it away? you? Hey, look. Okay. Do you want to see some more? Stay there. Chicken. Fucking hell. I mean, look at this. What's this for? When's that from then, chef? Those are from today. Those are, those are not going to be served to the public. Oh, they're not going to be served to the public. I'm right? telling you that I'm not going to serve this. So you're, you're saving them for what? Talk to me then. They're just from, from this morning. You bullshitting little fucker. No, you're the little fucker. I'm telling you, this were made today. Oh, now, right. If you don't fucking believe me, that okay. is your responsibility. So that is your thing. You're lying through your teeth. I am not lying yes, through my teeth. Yes, you are. You can't, okay. even tell, you can't even tell me the truth. Do you know truth why? what? Because you don't know. And you're a fucking joke. Listen. Okay. You're a joke too. After a miserable dinner service and discovering the state of the walk-in... What's this for? Does you're not going to be served to the public. You bullshitting little fucker. Chef Ramsay has had enough of Jorge's excuses. You're lying through your teeth. I am not lying yes, through my teeth. Yes, you are. Okay. You can't even tell me the truth. Do you know truth why? About what? Because you don't know. And you're a fucking joke. You Listen. Kidding. All right. You're a joke too, man. Are you going to walk off now? Walk off? Listen, uh, all you do, all you're doing is hammer it. Do you know what? What upsets me more about you than anything is that you don't even realize you're playing at running a restaurant. And the minute you start looking at yourself in the mirror and stop blaming the people around you, the quicker you may get this place turned around. Got it? Good. Fucking joke. Hori does need his eyes open a bit. He didn't really think we had that many problems with the food. But it's obvious tonight that things are not right. Jorge needs to hear what Chef Ramsay had to say. After a disastrous day one, Chef Ramsay wants to get through to the owners about all of the issues of the restaurant. Good morning. Good morning. How are we? Good, good. He wants the staff to unload, and the owners will be watching via surveillance cameras. What I'd love to know is what the issues are behind the scenes. Are you going to help? Do you know what? The reason I'm here is to help. But I can't start helping until I know exactly what is going on. So what I need from you guys is a clear picture. What are the main issues in here? Well, I don't know about anybody else, but I feel like Richard just is really reluctant to be interactive with the guests after they're sat. It's like butts and seats, mm -hmm. and that's where he stops. And we're really responsible of solving guest problems. Richard, he gets stressed, he drinks wine, and so sometimes it makes it hard for us to communicate with him when we're having problems, because he's been drinking all day. If he wants to be as effective as an owner, he needs to be completely 100% when he's here. That's a good point. It's a very good point. And does he drink every day? Yes. And what does Jorge think of that? They have a lot of separation. Jorge's in the kitchen and Richard's out front. Their interactions are very pretty minimal. 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 They need to educate themselves uh, more about this business. I know more about running a restaurant than either one of them together. They're too proud to say, hey, I do need help. Yeah. Chef Jorge, he acts like he's like on your level. He's like fresh out of culinary school. I mean, the ink hasn't even dried on his little certificate, and now he thinks he's an executive chef. Has anyone ever told Jorge that his food is so complicated? Chef is extremely stubborn, does not care what anybody has to say about anything, and if you dare say anything to him, it's your ass. Wow. You cannot give Jorge any negative feedback or you will get lashed out. Wow. I didn't see him lash out at anybody last night. Does, does he shout? Does he scream? What does he say when he, when he goes off? I get called dumb, uh, pinheaded. He had a conversation in Spanish a couple weeks ago in the kitchen about how fat I'd gotten. One day he snapped at me and I was just like, don't talk to me like that. And then he was like, oh, if you don't like it, well, you don't have to be here. I'm like, if I don't like verbal abuse, like, I don't have to be here. Seriously? Rude. I thank you for your honesty, OK? I think we need to stage an intervention for them because they're in denial. Good, because there's no need. They're right here. They're here right now. That's right. You're watching. Oh, my God. I'm going to get them and bring them out. OK? Good. 
Like, they're here right now. I never would have said those things if I had known that they were listening. I guess everything is out in the open now. After the staff detailed the problems with the owners... They're too proud to say, hey, I do need help. Gordon wants to bring the two sides together... Let's go. ...and bring it all to a head. You know, the most important part now is ironing this out. Um, we heard everything you guys said. And um, I was enlightened, period. That's all I got to say. Um, it, 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 it touched me um, deeply. And um, yeah, I was enlightened. I was, <laughs> I was enlightened. I should see. Oh man, this is this is really deep for me, man. I've always been a pillar. <sighs> Sit down. All right. You okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm you fine. sure? You go ahead, Horry. Yeah, just watching all of you guys just express how you feel. I was picturing the moments that you guys are talking about, and. Um, I really want to apologize um, to you guys for being unfair. You guys have been so dedicated to working with us together uh, to build this restaurant. I don't want you guys to feel like you've been taken advantage. I don't want you guys to feel that way. And I didn't know that was a feeling. As far as my attitude, believe me, that things will change. That's my word to you guys, and I'm willing to take those steps that we need to take to move forward. I definitely need to treat people differently you know, before he gets to this stage again. You know, I really never thought about what you guys thought. And I'm sorry. I consider myself a, you know, a pretty nice guy for the most part and loving and concerned and giving. And I, I, I haven't been to you guys. Not that I haven't been. And I apologize for that. I've learned more in these last few minutes than I think I've learned for the three years I've been here. I know me and I know what I'm capable of doing. And I haven't cared enough. I know that. There's so much more I could be doing. And there's so much more I could be learning as well. This is definitely a turning point. I'm looking for new and better ways. It's high time we changed. While Chef Ramsay has a plan to relaunch this restaurant, he knows it's also critical that Richard and Jorge reach out to the community. And he's arranged an opportunity for them to do just that. If there's ever a chance for you, a little apology out there. Yes. I can't think of a more fitting time yeah. now. All right. Let's go. Okay. Okay. <laughs> going on the news was a platform that part of this controversy started with, and going on the news now will allow us to use the same platform to hopefully end it. We are joined by the one and only Chef Ramsay, and he's brought a couple of friends along from Park's Edge Restaurant in Inman Park, and we are delighted to have you gentlemen with us. Let's talk about where they need to begin to get sure. things on the right track. Where do, where do they start at Park's mm -hmm. Edge? They had uh, the most amazing uh, restaurant with a great location, right. right smack bang in the neighborhood, and we got off to a wrong sort of footing, didn't we? Yes, we did. We basically didn't respect our neighborhood in the way we should have. There were some things that were set out of frustration that I sincerely want to apologize about, and we hope that we can gain the community's trust and respect once again. Mm -hmm. Being able to voice the apology on local TV was one of the greatest gifts I had ever received. You see me smiling ear to ear. I am so excited. I, I, can't, I can't even explain. After Richard and Jorge took their first big step to reconnect with the community. How are we? Good, how's it going? Ladies, good to see you. Chef Ramsay is now ready to unveil Park's Edge new look. It's the beginning of a new era. Let go of the past and look forward to an exciting yeah. new future. Welcome to the new Park's Edge. Beautiful. Wow. Edgy. Edgy. Very rustic looking. Huh? Rustic, clean, simple, modern. Good news is, the orange is gone. Yeah. Even better news, the orange is gone. Fill on the inside too. <laughs> you ready to come inside? Yeah. Yes, we are. Let's go. go. Let's go, let's All go. Right. Come round. Oh my god. What? Oh my god. Wow. Oh my god. This is beautiful. Take it in. Gone are the hideous colours. We brought in a new contemporary feel. Oh my god. Yeah. 
Ah, this is phenomenal. Now, I got goosebumps as I was walking in. I was seeing the new colors, and you know, there's like a life in here. And I am very proud to be the owner of Park Says right now. We've got some amazing pictures on the wall. All these images are local. Doesn't it look good that you're bringing back in the neighborhood into your restaurant and confirm if you care about them? Such a great idea. The new look is so refreshing. This is who we are. Beautiful, hand-painted, hand-carved, stunning wood panels on the wall. You're on the park's edge, so we have incorporate that stunning backdrop into the restaurant. I love it, man. I love it. All the linens have gone and exposed those beautiful wooden tables. I am so happy and so proud. I am flabbergasted of the changes that were made in the dining room. Chef Ramsey has taken this restaurant to another level that we didn't even consider. It's beautiful, man. Yes. In addition to revamping the decor, wow. please, Chef Ramsay has completely overhauled Jorge's complicated menu. This new menu is easy to execute. And let's get one thing right. It's American cuisine with a contemporary twist. <laughs> Excited? Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Right, let's start off with this delicious green fried tomatoes with a, a buttermilk dressing. Light, a little bit of spice, and delicious. Wow. Next to that, spicy wings. Yeah, so with a really nice herb blue cheese dressing. I can't wait to eat stuff so we can start eating. <laughs> uh, entrees, pan seared salmon, you just done with a cauliflower puree and a caper relish. Next to that, a nice little robust slice of pork belly with a cassoulet, easy on the line. Any questions? When can we eat? Jump in. Oh, wow. Those wings are really good, too. This is some of the best food I've ever had. Food's definitely making me realize that my food was just too far complicated. Chef was way better. I hope nobody else wants these fries. It's my new favorite restaurant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No more fresh, no more fun punch. No more. <laughs> now that the menu has been revealed. OK, so this some mussels. That, that's our portion for mussels? Chef Ramsay has brought in his team to spend all day training the Park's Edge kitchen staff. There's a saute, okay. and there's a grill. But not everyone is on board with the changes. And then there's a fry station. OK, so you do the fry station. No, I will absolutely not cook a chicken huh? wing. You won't cook a chicken wing? No. What's that? Don't feel comfortable frying a chicken wing. Why not? Unless she wants to put on a pair of orange shirts and go out there and serve it. They're here to train us, OK? You got to turn around and give them a hard time. Check yourself before you check them out, OK? I'm going to ask you again. He has this huge ego about fried chicken. This is really irrelevant. He's going to do what I tell him to do, not what he wants to do. No, What's going on? You put a bunch of fucking chicken wings on the menu. Okay. I think somebody ought to fucking put some orange shorts on there and got them serving. OK. So how about a little bit of respect and showing these two guys? A little fucking respect for a fine dining restaurant and not putting fucking chicken wings on the menu. A fine dining restaurant. Are you fucking listening to yourself? Where? where, where? Yeah. So who the fuck do you think you are? Who do I think I am? Yeah, a guy fucking... that knows when a menu sucks. How dare you get jumped up telling the owners the menu's shit because you think you know better. But why aren't you doing better? Why haven't you got your own restaurant? How about having the intelligence to calm down and to start again? Is that possible, yes or no? It's possible. Will you do it? Yes or no? Yes. Thank you. Today's a huge night. There's no way I'm going to let somebody fuck it up. Mad needs to be on board or get out. Show me what to do so I can do it. Thank you. It's relaunch night at Park's Edge. Big night. Yeah, tonight we go forward. Happy, everybody? Yes. Good. And fresh off Richard and Jorge's TV appearance. Hey, folks, how you doing? Welcome to Park's Edge. I'm Richard. How's it going? The restaurant is packed, and the community seems ready to give Park's Edge another chance. This is day one for Park's Edge. We've got a great new menu going. We're a new restaurant, and I hope everything goes perfectly. We have a great new menu this evening. Everything's good, honestly. I even have things on here. I'm going to go with the mixed mushroom rigatoni. Great, thank you all very much. Here we go. Order in, Chef. Thank you. All right, I need two orders of mussels right here. Working, please, Jesse. Two orders of mussels. Okay, Matt, go ahead and focus on the green fried tomatoes. Thank you. I'm gonna run my kitchen like a Thai chef tonight. I gotta make sure that the food leaves this kitchen perfect. 21's up. Wow, that was fast. Nice. What a difference. All right, Lovely. can I get a runner, please? With Jorge really stepping up and commanding his kitchen. 32's coming up, 22's working. Good. That's exactly the tone, Jorge. Okay. Delicious food is going out seamlessly. That's so good. It's good, right? Yeah. Jorge, you drive it. Drive, Let's drive, go. drive, yes? Yes, yes. Yay, the food is coming out so quick. Don't jinx it. I'm oh, sorry. How long on wings? Yeah. This is fucking ridiculous. Yeah, Come on, Matt. I know you hate the wings, but just sell them, please. Hate me, don't hate the wings. Got your orange shorts. Orange shorts. 
Cut the shit to the end of service, OK, big boy? Come on. Hey, you, while you want to fuck around and take the piss, let me tell you something really important. What's that? Yeah, I fucking forgot more than you know. Just serve the food and shut the fuck up, smart ass. Man, okay. what is the big deal? I'm trying huh? to have a good time. You're not having a good time, man. You're making life tough. I'm having a good time. Why is he acting like that? Because he's a jackass. Matt is beyond the weakest link. You are here to do a job. Do it. Port Billy's in the window. Matt, that's overcooked. I know you don't care, but I do. And you're supposed to be working hard tonight to help get this place turned around. Why are you now trying to sabotage it? Mr. Shittock, who thinks he can't fucking cook a chicken wing, can't even drop a piece of pork in the fryer. Look at it, dry piece of overcooked pork belly. He's going to start sending us down. Matt, you seriously want to fuck me over right now? No. Why are you being a piece of shit for them? I don't know if there's something wrong with that or not. I'm not a violent man by any means, but if he fucks it up for me tonight, I will literally do something. I'm still waiting on a pork belly. Yeah, how long on a pork belly? Talk to me, guys. How you doing? Plating, chef. Thank you. Oh, hey, please, touch it. Please, it's stone cold. Come on, man. Chef, what do you think of that? That's shit, yeah? All this work for this. Matt's having this really, really difficult time adjusting to the menu. It's almost like he's trying to destroy his whole dinner service. Why would you fuck up service tonight? You're making me look like shit. Chill out with the fucking drama. What you say? I said chill out with the drama. Get out of here right now. Get the fuck out right now. You know what? Get out of here. It's relaunch night at Park's Edge. Poor Billy's in the window. Look at it. Dry. And line cook Matt has not only made a number of mistakes. You can't be selling shit like that, man. Chill out with the fucking drama. But he has had a bad attitude as well. What'd you say? I said chill out with the drama. Get out of here right now. Jorge has had enough. Get the fuck out right now. You know what? What'd you say? Get out of here. Alright, fine. It's cool if you're gonna be serious like that. Matt, see ya. Let's continue working, please. This is my kitchen, and we're moving forward. And if somebody becomes an obstacle or a speed bump, they're gone. We have no more tolerance for that. Hey, boy. Well done. Step up now. Well, yeah, get yeah. together and yes. make it happen. Jesse, can you pick up some other stuff, please? Okay. I'm just waiting on pork belly. I think it's a good thing that Matt's gone. Now we can get down to business and not bicker like children. Pork belly in the window. Awesome, you are rocking my world. Now with everyone pulling in the same direction. Open door, chef. I'm gonna need a runner. Got it. Thank you. Dishes quickly make their way out to happy diners. Oh, those look great. That's great. My customers are happy, and it's just a completely different environment in the restaurant. I'm actually happy to be working here tonight. We're done now, right? Yes. We still have a lot of work to do, but I definitely believe that we could build this restaurant again. Good job hanging in here today. Yeah, much better. Mel, thank you. Thank yeah, you. You're good, baby. Oh, hey. Yes, sir. It's been a rough week, let me tell you. We've had ups and downs, especially you and I. And do you know what? I didn't think you were going to step up to the mark. I didn't think you were confident enough. But my God, strong finish. Thank you. Customers love the food, let me tell you. Don't start over-complicating your menu. You got my word. This, this is a new beginning. Richard? Yes, sir. You're a smart guy. Mm -hmm. You're better than just sitting, meeting, and greeting. Get in there. Get your hands dirty. OK, sir. We have come a long way. And this is just the start. Every day you walk in there, demand the best out of Richard, and you demand the best out of Jorge. Push each other. Yes, sir. Definitely. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Good night. It's a pleasure. Chef Ramsey didn't only change our business, he changed our lives. Good night. Good, Good night. night. Thank you. Thank you. When I first got here, I met two owners that were completely clueless. One didn't know how to run a restaurant, and the other one had no idea how to run a kitchen. They've both come a long way, clearly, but they've got an even longer journey now to rebuild this reputation in the community and to become a successful restaurant. Honestly, I wish them luck. <sighs> Breaking news, we've stopped grilling Caesar salad.
and the weeks that followed. Thank you, thank you for coming back out again. I know we got off the wrong foot. Richard and Jorge continued their community outreach. I appreciate the support, thank you. And business at Park's Edge is definitely on the rise. Richard has taken a more active role. Okay, salmon. Salmon. Can I get a New York strip on the window, please, for 43? It's coming right now. Thank you. Jorge has not only embraced the new menu, but has done a great job executing it. Here, two shrimp and grits. Thank you. Second and bacon. Our future for Park Sage is not guaranteed, but I definitely have a very, very strong feeling that we are on our way to success. There's a new light at the end of the tunnel. University City, Pennsylvania. Nestled in the heart of West Philadelphia, this thriving neighborhood is home to two major universities, and smack in the middle is Zocalo, an authentic Mexican restaurant run by longtime employees turned owners, Greg Russell and his wife, Mary. I was a bartender, and my wife used to make fresh tortillas, and the tortilla station is literally right across from the bar, so we spent a lot of time flirting with each other, and one thing led to another, and the next thing you know, we're dating, we got married, and then we purchased Zocalo in 2008. Hi, welcome to Zocalo. When Mary and I bought the restaurant, it was a dream come true. I thought it would be a storybook ending, but real life is not a storybook. Let me say something. You need people help you in the kitchen. Dear, come back here and help me, yes? I go back, help. Yeah, right. Do what you want. When Mary and I bought the restaurant, I thought that we were going to be partners. Right now, Mary works three days a week. That's it. But boy, I'll tell you, when she is here. Greg, what happened with this banana? It's too dry. She'll let you know. I don't know what you must really make. Big satin with the pork, and you can ready fresh. Come on, Greg. We sold six porks all night. I'm not going to leave uh, a big, yeah, yeah. huge stock yeah, pot full yeah, of pork yeah. simmering all yeah. night and then yeah. not sell it. Yeah, you all right. Do it. This is a battle between them. Greg works all the time. He's all around restaurant working. Miss Mary, I ain't going to say she's lazy, but she's barely here. Honestly, when she do come, she makes it very hard to work. OK, I need B5 and B6 right now. B6 in my hand. No, B5 first. It's more stressful here at the restaurant when my mom's here. She likes to get her way. She's very, very controlling. What is Maria? A lot of the problems come because she likes to tell everybody what to do. I know how to clean the table, but doesn't want to be there to work. Bring the food more fast, you understand? Help, help. Can you please help me, man? Help. Like, Maria. What? Come on, Cochina. Look at this. I didn't wipe this table. She comes across as. I, I, no. I don't even know what word to use for that. If you really want it to improve, then get involved a little bit more. I don't like working. I'm sorry, Greg. What I'm asking you to do is support the restaurant more. I don't want to speak now. Yeah, that's enough. I definitely feel the restaurant is running my parents' life. They don't have, uh, like, a marriage anymore, really. <laughs> I don't know if our relationship is strong enough to withhold the pressures of owning a restaurant. What I do know is I'm pretty sure that our relationship is not strong enough to withstand the pressures of losing our restaurant. Color. Okay, great. Look at those. Tin man. Wow. How are you, sir? Good to see you. Oh, look at this place. Hello. Eh? How are you? Oh, my God. I'm fine. Good. Nice to see you. Mary Russell. Mary or Mary? Mary. Mary. Mary Russell. What a beautiful place. It's gorgeous. Oh, I hope so. You wow. like the food. I mean, it's authentic. Mexican, right? Yeah. Gorgeous. Do you want me to sit you? Please. I call Chef Ramsey to understand me because I have accent and he have accent too. <laughs> I, 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 I really like it. Thank you. Excellent. Come in. The Chef Ramsey is here. I'm a little nervous about meeting Chef Ramsey and, and having him critique the restaurant because I know how intense he is. However, you met my wife. How are you? Hello, Chef. I'm well. How are you? Good to see you. It's a pleasure to meet you. Greg, isn't you. it? Yes. Good to see you. Go Sit on. down, but let's have yes. a catch up. Uh, please, take a seat. Um, take me back to the beginning. How did you end up here? How, how did you start off? 
The restaurant opened in the summer of 1989. My sister was one of these sous chefs. Okay. She called me up. She said, look, can you help me out? I said, sure, I'll, I'll give it a shot. And I've been here pretty much ever since. Wow. What's the fascination with it? Every major change in my life has happened here. I met my wife here. You know, mm -hmm. Our son was born while we were here. Wow. Incredible. And I have yep. two girls. So okay. They okay. work here. Okay. So it's more of a family business than I thought. Oh, it's absolutely a family business, but, yeah. I mean, how's business been? The first six, seven months, I mean, we got great reviews from. You know, everybody loved it. So in terms of where we are now. This place is really slow now, no, no customers. What are we turning a week? We'd be lucky to do seven, 8,000 in sales a week, and wow. we need to be at about 15. So barely $1,000 a day? Yeah. There are days where sales are $300. Wow. I don't think that it's the best restaurant in Philly, but I think it's, it could be the best Mexican restaurant but in Philly. But it's not the same before when you start, really. It's not the same before. So the food's gone down? Yeah. I don't think it has. Take me through a day. Um, wake up 5.30 or so, drop my son off at school at 6.45, um, stop at the produce market or, you know, wherever I have to shop because I do most of the shopping for the restaurant. Um, arrive at the restaurant about 8 o'clock, 8.30. I shake out the, the carpets, I clean the bathrooms, I mop all the dining rooms, run down the office, check my emails, check the bills, whatever. Then I go into the kitchen, set up the line, start to prep for the Sometimes day. Sometimes I have to run out, you know, in between lunch and dinner to get something. The dishes, start prepping for dinner, and then clean up, and I usually get out between 11 and 12. Every day? Every day. That's a long day, Greg. It, it sounds ridiculous. When was your last day off? I worked every day for over a year. No break, no vacation, no nothing. No, Just a year yeah. straight. Wow. Mary, where's your expertise coming? Are you the front of house? Are you the kitchen manager? What do you do? Hello. Hi. Sometimes my wife's not here. So, how many days a week is she here? <laughs> Only part time. Okay. That's another thing that we sort of butt heads on. Yeah. In terms of debt, where are we? We're looking upwards of three quarters of a million dollars. Three quarters of a million? I mean, that's a lot of money. And that's For a place that's only making eight grand a week. <laughs> How are you managing? Owning a restaurant that is declining at a rapid pace and on the verge of losing your house and, you know, everything else is it's a lot of stress. I mean, I can, I can feel the stress from here, but... I mean, we argue constantly, and it's oh, it sometimes. Oh, absolutely. Hear me fight too much all the time. It's not. It's not my life. The same before in the beginning. She has told me on numerous occasions, if I can't meet my responsibilities and take care of the family, she'll move back to Mexico. I mean, I know that my wife thinks a lot of this is my fault. You know that it's not doing well, and I don't know if it's my fault. I know that it's my responsibility, and that's the hardest part. So I'm not able to take care of it. Within minutes of arriving, Chef Ramsay was greeted with a gloomy picture of the restaurant. I send this service right yes, now. Please. Now he's hoping that he can find some optimism in the food. How are you, darling? Hi, how are you? Good to see you. Good to see you too. And your first name is? Maria. Maria. I have to say, it's a huge menu for one yeah. chef on his own. How does he manage all that? I don't know how he does it, but he's here 24-7. How many days a week is she here? Three. Three. If that. Wow. Right. Mitchell last is $19. The skirt steak, $23. So the food's not cheap, is it? No. No. And, and what would you recommend? Oh, um, I don't, I don't know. I just never have it. Oh, really? You don't order your own food? Wow, it's crazy. I usually don't eat at Zocalo because the prices are not affordable at all. OK, let's start off with the queso fundido. Yeah, OK, let's get one of those. OK. And the uh, cochinita. The chili reno. And then uh, mocajete. OK. Yeah, I think we're sure. done. Thank you, Danny. Water? Uh, yes, please. Thank you. This is for Chef Ramsay? Yes. Water in, please. This is Chef Ramsay's ticket. It's not a three Michelin star restaurant. I know that. Chorizo fundido. But I'm hoping that Chef Ramsay tastes our food and says it's not a lost cause. You know, that's all I can hope for. 125, yeah? Mary, 
Who, uh, who does the prices? The Lyric. Yeah? Yeah. Twenty-three and a half dollars for entree. I mean, that's not cheap. Yeah. Here is the queso fundido and flour tortillas that you can wrap it up with. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. It's just like a greasy mess, so full of oil. I can feel my arteries just squeezing. Mary, is that microwaves? I don't know. I'm done, thank you. I can't really uh, afford a heart attack. OK. Thank you. You're welcome. Children, see, we don't feel happy. Well. It's not good. Greg, are you putting that cheese on the microwave? Yes. Here is the chili reino. Thank you. Ooh, that is a very weird looking reino. Salty. What cheese is that? What is that? Sorry? So rubbery. Cheese is dreadful. Usually the cheese is melted inside. But it's spongy and rubbery, no? Honestly, that's dreadful, that stuff. Will you show that to Mary as well, please, darling? Yes. Damn. I'm starving. Greg, look at the cheese. Chef said it's rubbery what kind of and... What you use? It's queso friere. Queso what? Friere. Eh? What is queso friere? It's similar to the queso fresco. And it wasn't available, so I couldn't get it. Hi, Greg. He doing whatever he want. There's no Mexican. You don't want to do it the same. Don't do it. OK. He say the cheese is prier. Prier. He said it was what cheese? Prier. 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 Uh, something that. That is no Mexican. No. That was dreadful. This is the cochinita pibio. This is the cochinita. Corn tortillas. Corn tortillas, thank you. How was your cochinita? There's no seasoning. There's no... It's all very... Uh, how it tastes? It's all very bland. Hmm. Mm. I think it needs to dry. It's very dry. Why is that so dry? Before I make the cochinita really good, but now oh. I know. It's I don't better think so. when you made them. Yeah, now. Now that Greg's yeah. making them, they're not as good. Yeah. I think you need to go back in the kitchen. I like the kitchen. In what way? It's all this. It's uh, just leave the floors no for work. I don't like the kitchen because it's too tiny kitchen and it's too hot. Do you see the kitchen? It's too hot. Let me go and check in how are you next molcajete. Excellent. Come on. That's really dry. That's it serious. What you give to dry? I do it exactly how she says every time I do it. So if it's not working, well, then you come back here and do it. It's no good. What do you give it to him? I don't know. Don't check on your floor staff. No. Huh? Don't check on your floor staff. Hi. Hey, this molcajete is coming up. This one should at least blow his top this time. Let's see, we're batting a zero so far. <laughs> Here we go. Jesus. So, this is the mocajete. I'm oh, like something out of Harry Potter. I feel like I'm a facial steam. OK. That's the, uh, the cactus. cactus. Yeah. Cheese, heebie-jeez. Let's have a little taste of the cactus <laughs> first, shall we? There's your bit. It's like okay. eating the inside of a golf ball. Needs to be more cooked. Needs Maybe to be seasoned, more. bland, Maybe. bitter. They cook cactus like that in Mexico? No. In Mexico, they shoot you for that. Mm -hmm. It's like caca. I feel a little angry, embarrassed, frustrated. I think it maybe he don't like nothing. <laughs> It's caca. It is caca. Come on, man. I stand by my food on a personal level. I'm like your little brother. I just feel so sorry for you right now. I am certainly not on Chef Ramsay's level, but I think that what we have on the menu is good, solid, quality food. Greg. Let's go through it, big boy. Yeah? Uh, right. OK. Here's the thing. The food's below par. I don't know where to start. The queso fundido, that was hideous. 
Do you microwave it? We do pie microwave it. I mean, so when you microwave that cheese, all the fat comes out twice as fast, it becomes like an all slick on top, which is a disgusting. The cochinita pibia. It's dry. The cactus bland. The chili, you know, that, that, that. the cheese inside there was weird. It was a kiss of free air, it's called. It certainly wasn't worth the price, let me tell you. I, I felt almost like I was being robbed. You put your neck in a noose when you're charging $23.5 for that. Oh, absolutely. I wouldn't pay it. I told her. Hold on a minute. I didn't come up with the prices. Oh, hold on a minute. You don't come up with the prices. You told me Greg does. Who does the prices? Greg. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> That's not funny, uh, Mary. I didn't change the prices on this menu. Sometimes you say, Greg, what is the queso chihuahua? Oh, I tell you how much it is per pound, but I don't tell you let to charge me, $11. Let me finish, let me finish talking. I did not make a case of Fundido 1095. I said, why are you raising the prices? I think that's ridiculous. But you say to me, that is too expensive. Yes. You didn't consult with me on the prices. The, on this yeah. price change, you did not consult with me. Who raised the prices? You. Yeah, I did it. You've got a big issue. Yeah. Let and me tell you. The difference is only 50 cents or $1. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's just a way of driving more customers away from the business. Let me finish talking. No, Mary, you can't, I know the cost. you can't okay, let chase me revenue. Let me finish. Let me finish. You can't chase revenue by increasing the prices. Now you're thinking it's my fault. I believe. Come on, guys. While the owners blame each other for Zocalo's problems, Chef Ramsay knows that dinner service will be more enlightening than anything this husband and wife have said so far. Well, you're ready, right? Yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. Everything's set up. I absolutely feel hope having Chef Ramsay here. Obviously, there's something that we're doing wrong, and we just need an outsider's perspective, and there's nobody else better to do that than oh. Chef Ramsay. How's the line work? Take me through it. Yeah, um, obviously, two fry laters, a grill, two ovens. This oven doesn't work. Only the one side works. You ready? You haven't got a handle. Well, it, yeah, no. but it doesn't work. It's a dinosaur, that thing. Yeah. And you've got no pilots on either. The pilot lights don't work. I mean, we, you know, I carry the gas mask with me. As if you haven't got enough to do, so. Right. There are a lot of things that are not working as properly as they should. My old sous chef used to love to rip the top off. I just do what I have to do to make it work. It's like Frankenstein. Yeah. How are you doing tonight? Do you have any questions on the menu at all so far? I'm going to do the quesadilla. Me too. Sorry. Okay. I'll get the hueso fundido. Order in. Mushroom fundido. And mushroom fundido. Are we going in the microwave or are we going to do it properly? Mm. Sounds like the microwave. Sounds like the microwave. Sounds like the microwave, yeah. The microwave is definitely like our big bell out. Because the food is always getting backed up. You see, here's the bad news. The microwave takes the fun out of the fundito. Yeah. I guess you could say that. Yeah. Fire B8, please. Fire H2, please. Fire J6, please. J6. Uh, don't worry about any of that. Yes, sir. Is one of these fundidas mine? Yeah, I can't keep track of whose they are, dude. I need my guacamole for H6. You got to hold on. Is B4 coming up? I fired that 20 minutes ago. Everything's coming, Darren. I only got two hands, all right? I'm getting really frustrated. My food should be up on the line, and it's not because Greg tries to do everything himself. Want me to start plating them up? Yeah, I got them, I got them. You're good for right now. Greg is definitely getting backed up. He's like, I'm here to help you. All right, can you grab me a... Uh... No, I'm mind. There is no question that Greg works hard in the kitchen. You good, boss? Want me to jump down there? I got him, man. But he also prefers working alone. What was mine? Which translates to painfully slow delivery of food. It's been an hour. And unhappy customers. How long are you waiting? 10 minutes, 20 we minutes? We ordered like 40 minutes. 40 minutes? OK, yeah. let me check. Greg, I need beef pie right now. Babe, I can only got two hands, yes? I Everybody's know, waiting. But it's only chicken enchiladas, small and pork. Come on. You want ice cold pork, or do you want it hot? Oh, give me number five. B five, please. The food is late. Here, I'm working on them. I'm working on them. Oh, my God. There's seven of you out there and two of us back here. She's killing me, man. Yeah, I feel you. I can't take her coming back and telling me that I'm doing it wrong or it's taking too long. It's deflating. B five. It's coming right now, dear. 
Okay, I got it. After customers wait as much as 90 minutes, Greg finally pushes food out of the kitchen. Okay. But when the overpriced, slow food arrives, I don't like this at all. it does little to please the customers. This tastes like someone like dumped a bunch of salt on it. The, the, this is really greasy, so I'm not sure. Really what? Greasy. So greasy? Right, pork chicks and twine and shrimp mojo sloppy bear. Greg, one of my chillas take him back because again. Babe, I got to get this food out. OK, but you need to understand what is the problems right now. I can't talk to you right now. Let me finish. OK, dear. I don't get mad at Mary for telling me what the customer feedback is. And everybody is complaining with enchilada. But she wants me to sort of drop everything and listen to her. Despite Mary's constant critiques, Come on, Greg. Greg keeps it together. Right, we're in the home stretch, man. This is the last table right here. And finishes dinner service. Thank you. Have a good night. Guys, can you just leave us alone for two minutes, please? No problem. No problem. Okay. Greg, it's just not the way to run a business. You're so submerged into it that you, you don't even realize what you've taken on. And you have a wife that is happy to see you do that. So I'm pissed with her in the way that I'm not saying she's driving you into the ground, but I didn't see any support there tonight. I'm sorry. I mean, it's a big difference between nagging and, and being supportive. The whole weight of this restaurant is on my shoulders. You know, she says, hire somebody to cook. Well, the money's not there. Whatever, what am I gonna do? Guys, can you just give me two minutes, please? Please. <sighs> I'm worried, Greg. I don't know any other way to do it, Jeff. Have you ever actually like, sat down and said to me, I, I, I fucking need you in here, whether you like it or not. And if I didn't know the background, Watching the way you two liaise with each other, I'd never believe that I was husband and wife, ever. We don't act like husband and wife ever. anymore. It's, it's just too dangerous, buddy. It's just, it's, it, it's so fragile in here. It's all built around just you and between you and I. Do you think that's healthy? Come no, on. I don't think that's healthy. Come on. My family depends on me. I don't want to let them down. You can't do it on your own. There has to be a way, there has to be a way. I can't let it fail. I mean, I just can't. Without question, Zocalo has a lot of issues. But the one issue that needs to be dealt with immediately is the decaying relationship of Greg and Mary. And Chef Ramsay has a plan to do just that. Morning, Greg. Good morning, Chef. How are you? Yeah, well, thank you. Um, yesterday was a huge eye-opener. And I've got one very important question to ask you. Do you feel let down? Yeah, truthfully, I feel a little bit let down because I don't feel that I'm getting the moral support. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm trying to do something for them, and I don't mm -hmm. think that they see that I'm doing it for them. I think that they think that I'm doing it for me. But I don't think they quite fully have digested what happens if it does close. They've all told me, why don't you just close it? And I said, you don't understand what the ramifications of that are. We lose everything. Yeah. I mean, everything we lose. OK, come with me. I want okay. to show you something. I want you to watch something. I can't want you to sit down. Um, watch this program. I think you're going to find it quite interesting. With Greg watching closely on the monitor. Hello, how are you? Hello. Well, how are you? Hello. Chef Ramsay has arranged for a chat with Mary and her daughters, Gabby and Anna. Uh, I spent some time with Greg last night before we left. And I, I saw a lot of frustrations, a lot of pressure. Do you see how desperate he is? Can you read that or? It's hard to read. We know that he's struggling, but he just doesn't speak out. So it's kind of hard for us to get it out of him. Yeah, it's just a, something that you see as a outsider. So he shuts down? Yeah. How long has that been like that? I Do say you? ever since, like, pretty much the restaurant started. I always say I'm like, I felt like my parents were much happier before they owned their own business. They would go out, have fun. <laughs> exactly. And right now, yeah. he's just living, I mean, surviving. Right. Do you think he's happy? No. The way I see it, the restaurant's sucking so much life out of him. And we try to get him to break out a little bit, but he just refuses to. He is just so stubborn. Like, he just will not leave sure. Zocalo. I don't think he He's can. Like the... He's such a one-man band. He does everything and anything. What would you do if you fell ill? What would you all do? I continue running the business. I personally don't think you can. I'm sorry. Oh, really? 
I don't feel afraid. Well, how are you going to do it, Mary? How would um, it work? I, for me, I put in one really chef behind the kitchen. But we haven't got money for salaries. If he stops, this business will close. I don't think he realise what he's doing for all of you. Everything he does is to keep a roof above your heads. Not because he loves doing it. And I don't think he feels that he has the emotional support. That's what's eating him away. I think that one of you can do a bit more. Mary, are you willing to support him? Do you think deep down inside you could do more? In here? Yes. I can. Why? Because I need thinking in myself too. He cannot do it alone. Yeah, but really, I don't want to do it something I don't like it. Let me put it this way, Mary. Both of you wanted this dream. Yeah. You but... encouraged it. This is your responsibility, whether you like it or not. Right now, you're only here three days a week. And when you talk to him, it's not done in a constructive manner. You nag him. You can't lay into him like that. He's your husband. When you guys met, you were deeply in love. Has your love changed now? Now it's not the same. My relationship is not the same, the love. I don't feel the same, the... Passion. I feel, yeah, exactly. Do you still love him? I know, and really... After confronting Mary about her lack of involvement in the restaurant... You're only here three days a week. And when you talk to him and you nag him, you can't lay into him like that. He's your husband. Gordon probes a little deeper about her relationship with Greg. When you guys met, you were deeply in love. Has your love changed now? Now it's not the same. My relationship is not the same, the love. Do you still love him? I know. And really... Hola. I think he needs to hit. As a matter of fact. Greg, come through, please. <laughs> Chef Ramsey, it's right. We're not being as supportive as we could be for Greg. We just are so used to him doing everything that we don't realize that it's affecting him negatively. Isn't that nice to see, ladies? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't see that on service last night. I wish I did. I know. Listen, I know it was hard. I appreciate it. Spend a couple of minutes together. Thank you, Chef. I listened to the whole thing. I saw it all. I don't know what to say. I mean, I, emotionally, I need your guys' support. I mean, I just, I do. I believe the support is there for you. Even though if we don't actually say it all the time, we do support you on whatever you need. Just speak up. That's all we need. Yeah. Let us know how. It's very difficult for me to ask my family <laughs> for help because as the head of the household, I always thought it was my responsibility to take care of my family. Take care of the family is not just you. I'm here. I'm here. He really is the person I love. The person really gave me all my life different and happy. And I think he is a good guy. A really good man. I want to love you, change together. I respect what you say, and it's possible to work together. It was a tough thing to watch, but it was sort of an eye-opening experience. While I may say, I can just do it myself. I can just do it myself. I need their help, and it's good to know that they're behind me. This is fantastic. Listen to you guys communicate. Can I just quickly show you something? Sure. Yeah, please. Come through. Come in. Man. Holy crap. It's your new oven. Oh, my it's God. It's beautiful. It's gorgeous. Wow. You have the most amazing South Bend 10 gas ring burner. Stunning. Two superb, super hot ovens from my friends at Color Quit. It's gorgeous. It is a perfect piece of equipment for a small, busy kitchen, let me tell you. It's phenomenal. Oh, thank, thank you, you so Chef. Much. 
unbelievable. I was floored. I mean, it's gorgeous. It's my first real new piece of equipment, and it's unbelievable. Clearly, a brand new oven will be a major help to the kitchen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. But Chef Ramsay's brand new menu comes through. Wow. Mm. Oh, wow. Will make an even more dramatic impact on the future of Zocalos. Look at the menu. It shouts out fun, cool, hip. Yeah, it does. OK. Right, let's start off with this end. Case of indeed done beautifully. We've got the oven. We can do this properly. Yeah. Nice. Our bondigas classic meatball soup, robust and delicious. It's a lot cheaper than we were serving beforehand, but we need traffic in here. Next to that, empanadas. Got that nice authenticity to it. Quesadillas, chicken, pork, beef, or shrimp. Absolutely. We've lined it up with the fish, snapper, then with bell peppers, onions, green olives, and capers. Beautifully done, grilled, and taste. Stunning. I love it, Dad. Get some knife and forks. <laughs> Dig in. Mmm. The salsa is perfect. I actually really like the enchiladas. Wow, that is really good. I can't wait to serve our clientele the new dishes. I think that they're really going to enjoy them, and it's going to open this place up to a whole new demographic. I love the albonigas. Mm. Oh, God, this is so good. To go along with the massive change of the menu. OK, let's go. Chef Ramsay has another surprise for Zocalo. OK, since I've been here, I've never seen such an antiquated way of ordering. So this is what you will be using. <laughs> oh, my God. What is oh, that? Oh, nice. This is your new POS system wow. provided by Zephyr Hardware and POS Lavo. Now, you go to the table oh with God. your tablet. Oh, the orders go straight through to the kitchen. We'll have the pictures of each and every dish. Oh, and Greg, this system can track your infantry, manage your sales. It's unbelievable. And by the way, you swipe the credit card here. Oh, <laughs> my God. You yeah. then sign on the pad. Oh there, God. take that. Oh my <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, it's so cool. You, you can do everything just from this one little device. I'm super excited to use the new POS system. That's <laughs> what? Our dream. Yeah. Mary, you OK? I say it's our, our dream that Greg and me wanted before, for a long time. Good. And I have the dream now. Good. This is a new beginning for us. We get to do it over and start out on the right path. You happy? Mm-hmm. Chef Ramsay knows in order to have Zocalo's kitchen run properly... Come in, come in, come in, come in. ...he needs the restaurant to be properly staffed. So he has created a program with Drexel University to supply culinary students to the restaurant. I'm working in a stunning little Mexican restaurant called Zocalo. Is there any possibility that I could take two very strong students and give them some on-the-job training? We have just the two students you're looking for. Oh, really? It's great training for the students, and it provides Greg with much-needed support. I want them to fit around you. Right. These guys, not just top of the class, but hungry and um, are keen to really get behind you on this one. They're good. It's absolutely early to have some help. We're going to mix this with some spinach and a little bit of what we call chihuahua cheese. They're going to make all the difference in the world. Nail it, yeah? Nail it, nail it, nail it. Uh, Mary, two seconds. Greg, two seconds, please. Now, this is where it really counts. I need you to step up. I need you to expedite. Yeah. But don't let the stands drop. Right. You've got a brigade, so there's no excuse now. We okay. can do it. Come on. Yes, yes, yes sir. Yeah? I'm really excited. I'm ready to change. And I'm ready to help together with my husband. As the doors open for the relaunch, how are we, darling? Welcome, welcome. There is clearly excitement in the air. For the first time in years, Mary and Greg face tonight's challenge, united as a team. OK, ready to order? I'll have the chicken quesadilla. I'm going to get the tacos. Push the sun button. Yes. We're good. Now it's going to begin. Burrito carne asada, burrito chicken, mocajete, steak. I'm a little nervous going into service tonight. I have a team, but it's a brand new team, and I'm really rusty with delegating. And what I need to do is remember how to communicate. All right, here we go. I need steak for a mocajete. Got it. Let me know when you're ready to fire that. Good. 
Good, good, good. So next is quesadilla, shrimp, and pork chop. Jerome, I need that chicken quesadilla right now. All right, Drew, do me a favor. Can you get that enchilada set up, rice and beans? So now next, egg pie. Hold so on, babe. Enchilada, quesadilla, chicken. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Give me one second, babe. Hurry on, hurry on. I'm tired. Say all the time. Talk to me, talk to me. Talk to me. H3, burrito, carnitas, and relleno. I told you twice. Hold on. Carnitas, relleno. Fuck. What's she doing? Greg's doing a great job. I could hear him talking to the kitchen, but Mary, she's just yelling at Greg, so nothing's getting done. Okay, fire H5. You're not fire. Fire B6. Wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on. I keep working with you, cereal. Why you not fire? Okay, why? Relleno, guys. They'll be next after this table. Hurry up. Hurry up. I need to know when I can drop that relleno. It's not even fire. Mary, don't talk about things that are fired. God. Mary's not helping. It's so frustrating. She's really just yelling. We don't need that right now. What we need is communication and to get this food out on time. How long for before? I need okay. before. OK. Although both Mary and Greg are dedicated to making tonight a success. Yeah, but they have not gotten their food. There is a communication breakdown between the two. We have been waiting forever. Which is causing the kitchen to get backed up. Serious, Greg, uh, I can't believe. And Mary to lose her patience. What are you doing here? I'm reading my tickets. Is, we don't don't look see me. Please, go, go, go to go up, please. When I have your food ready, I'd let you know. Greg, I need food going out of here. OK, yeah? Hurry up. I'm losing focus. I'm really worried that we're not even going to make it through service tonight. Fire on Jake, watch. Slow down. Oh, my God. Come on, guys, please. Hurry up. Hurry up. It's 45 minutes into Zocalo's relaunch, and Mary's expediting is not at all in sync with Greg and the staff. Fire H5. Do not fire. Fire on J1. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. And the kitchen is at a standstill. We have been waiting forever. How long has it been? 45 minutes. And a successful relaunch is in jeopardy. Mary, two seconds, please. Please. This could make or break this restaurant. Yeah. And it's so important to communicate. Okay. All right. Please. Yeah. I need to do better communication tonight. Babe, I'm sorry. I helped you. OK. Constructive help. Yeah. yeah please. Mary, tell me what's fired out there. J8. All right. Go H4. one at a time. Wait a minute. J8. Got it. What's the next one? H4. OK. H9. H9? Yes. All right. Hold on. Everything's going to be a couple of minutes, because I just got reorganized here. Can you fire B5 first, please? Yes. Drunk. I need all that right now. Help him out. I don't know if Chef Ramsay gave this Mary a pill or something to change her attitude. Fire J2, please. J2, fire. Thank you. But it was definitely like a different Miss Mary. All right, I'm waiting on two street tacos. Here, just wait for the meat the rest. That'll sell B4. Greg has everything under control. He's being the person that I was looking for to be, you know, years ago. <laughs> With little time to spare, Mary has made a major turnaround. This number, please. I know this one took a while. I'm sorry. Thank you. And is back on the same page as her husband. Two empanadas, J2. Two empanadas, J2. Pork tacos up. Thank you. And as a result, the kitchen is now running like a well-oiled machine. I like it. I love it. Tamales and tacos. These are the tamales with the short rib. Thanks so much for being so patient. Thank you. The shrimp is really good. Yeah, this okay. is delicious. Yeah. Well worth the wait. Thank you. Awesome. Definitely. Next table coming up, J9. J9, OK. About a minute and 15 seconds, please. I'm very proud of my parents working together and cooperating and helping each other out. That was really, really awesome. On the last two checks, just so you know. I love it. <laughs> In the beginning, it was a little hairy, but Mary really stepped up tonight. It's just a whole different attitude, which is much easier to respond to. That's a really good, yeah? Very good. It's been a long time since we were able to work together. It feels great. All right, that's it, gentlemen. See you guys. Let me tell you something really important. When I first arrived, I saw you on an island, trying to survive, isolated, your family drifting away. But on the back of tonight's performance, and what we've gone through this week, I see a completely different story. Watching you two working as husband and wife, when it's constructive and it works, it, it sounds magical, let me tell you. You're good together. Mary, we've had our ups and downs. Uh, are you serious? <laughs> you know more than you let on, let me tell you. Expediting, you work bloody well. Greg, do you still feel that you don't have their support? No, I feel that I have their support, totally. They killed themselves tonight, and I appreciate it. I appreciate it from each and every one of you. This restaurant can be a success. Just keep supporting each other like you did this evening, OK? Yes. 
finally the family coming together. I feel really incredible. My dreams is right there. Yeah. <laughs> Don't go too far. I'll be back. Don't Thank you me. worry about that. <laughs> uh, well done, you. Chef. Thank you very Seriously, much. Seriously, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Okay. You Thank deserve you success. Really. Good job. Really. Look after each other. Okay. Yes. Good night. Thank you, Chef. Oh, family. <laughs> we were at such a low point in the beginning that I didn't know whether we were going to make it or not. But you're in the kitchen with me. Yeah. I feel a lot of hope for the future now. Okay. We can do it together, yeah? <sighs> Incredible. I can't remember a kitchen nightmare where I am rooting for the owners more than these two. Greg has to be one of the nicest owners I've ever met. Mary, well, there's definitely something about Mary. What a character. Amazing. Now, these two are on the road to success. My only hope is that they stay on it. In the weeks that followed, the dinner services at Zocalo's got smoother and smoother. Are you ready for your HA? Yes, ready. The Drexel students became an integral part of the brigade. This is J8 coming up first. Yes, please. All right. Mm. The burritos. Is it? And more importantly, Greg got what he always wanted, his family's support, and his wife Mary back as a true partner. I have this bag, I have this Zocalo bag. I am so proud of what we've achieved together as a family. As long as we stick together, it's going to be a fun ride.